last time, right? Just give me a minute so I can show that to you. Right? So I think you can see the screen now uh, regarding uh, what we kind of discussed last time. So this is the course uh, uh, for the module under the category A3, prominent management, right? So we last week uh, we discussed about uh, identification of different breeds of cattle, buffalo, goat, and sheep, and what is a ruminant animal, right? So what are the basic characteristics behind just to kind of a classify as a kind of an animal, as a ruminant animal, and how it is kind of a different from uh, non-ruminant animal, right? So what are the basic uh, differences, characteristics, right? So we already discussed those uh, factors or kind of uh, information last week, and we just started about uh, the dairy cattle management aspects, right? Because we discussed goat management, sheep management. Management means not the management aspects, but the basic, uh, the stuff related to different breeds of goats and sheep and uh, what are their basics, uh, housing requirements, right? So how we are going to kind of uh, differentiate or identify, right? Those two breeds uh, with buffalo breeds and the dairy cattle breeds, right? So that's what we discussed last time and we had kind of a brief introduction to management of dairy cattle. Basically the newborn calf, weaning and calf management aspects and heifer management aspects, right? So I will briefly go through them again, specifically the dairy cattle management, just to get the kind of a specific background for today's lecture. And then we will be discussing about the breeding, uh, pregnant and lactating cow management, dry cow management aspects, and uh, what are the diseases and the housing for these dairy cattle, right? So that's what I kind of uh, wanted to uh, cover today under your course module, right? Right. Okay. So today we will start with uh, this uh, dairy cattle management. This is the basic uh, what we already discussed maybe during the first uh, few slides. And then we will go ahead with the available other kind of information. Right. Right. So we already kind of uh, discussed uh, what is the importance of uh, dairy cattle for our kind of economy as well as for the other countries, all right? So we already kind of uh, had brief discussion even uh, during our first module, right? So uh, when we had kind of a basic introduction to the livestock and poultry management in our country as well as in other countries. So we had kind of a brief introduction about the dairy cattle, right? So when we kind of uh, discuss about dairy cattle, right? Last time also we kind of had small kind of a introductory session, right? So we have to have kind of a... Uh, basic essentials for these animals, right? So basically they should have kind of a comfort environment, some kind of a leisurely environment, which means a uh, stress-free, right? And there shouldn't be any fear of predators or any kind of a strange uh, encroaching to the houses or the locations where they are living, right? And we should be able to kind of uh, provide some exercise for these animals, right? So we have to provide a very good health and just to kind of have good health and just to have kind of a exercise, right? The daily routine exercise program, right? Which means uh, it will assure, right? They are kind of a welfare plus kind of a balanced body conditions, right? We will be discussing what is a kind of a balanced body condition. In addition, when we kind of do some management regarding dairy cattle or even buffaloes or even uh, goats and sheep, right? What we have to do is we have to have kind of a daily routine practices in correct order. For an example, maybe we start with maybe around uh, 6 a.m. in the morning, right? So then we start with the cleaning, right? So then we start with uh, kind of a feeding the animals, right? Or then, then we start with the kind of a milking, 
practices or get the body weight or checking their health, right? And let them kind of walk around for maybe half an hour, one hour in the kind of outside of their housing systems, right? And then they take them back again to the houses where they are living, right? Or maybe then in the evening again, we, maybe we feed them, right? And then we take them for the milking purposes again, right? Then again, take them back or something like a kind of a routine practices in correct order. Then these animals are kind of a really adaptable, right? Very kind of a supportive animals. That we already discussed about who are these uh, basic dairy cattle, in exhaustic ones, Rations, Jersey, Ayrshire, right? The, even the Indian uh, breeds like Karpaka, Sahiwal, right? like a Sindhi, right? So those things, even the buffaloes, right? Nili Ravi, right? So we already discussed about those uh, breeds and those breeds are kind of a highly supportive animal if you kind of uh, train them into a kind of a correct order or kind of a daily routine practices, right? So then they know, okay, this is the next step. Okay, this is the next step. So they are kind of a already trained and will easy to manage them in this kind of an operation, right? So these are the basic kind of essentials that we have to kind of provide just to kind of assure, right? The basic comfort, right? The leisure, the exercise, and eventually kind of a train them into a kind of a correct order of practice, right? Then we already discussed these things, but just to kind of refresh your memories, right? So I will briefly go through them again. So then uh, you can kind of get some idea, right? What we already discussed and what we are going to discuss in the next few hours, right? So why we want to kind of manage a dairy calf, right? Dairy calf, like you know, padicha, gamang, saha, etanidila, maasa ki hipak kya nakang api tamang, calf like you know, hadun manu, saati ki hipak kya nakang samahar atawal, right? So what we want to do, right? Because the dairy cows are really important because they are the replacement herd, maybe within few months of a time, right? But dairy calf la tamang, adi ipad dena kattiya, tawa maasa ki hipakin, ego la tamang, ilangata breed karala, Right? So therefore, we want to have kind of a very good healthy cow in the future. Right? In addition, we want to have kind of an animal, right? Very good body capacity because they should be able to kind of a consume lots of rough ages, right? We already discussed what are the basic differences between these two monogastric and ruminant animals and these animals tend to eat lots of rough edges or dry foragers, right? And they are kind of a less efficient animal in terms of converting whatever the feed that they consume into whatever the kind of a usable output, which means about 20%, right? 80% is lost most of the time. And also we need to have a kind of a, have a long living calf, right? Maybe not one, two, three years. Maybe we want them maybe at least five to six years without any issues, all right? Then the next target is whatever the calf is born today, right? Should be able to give birth to a calf maybe within the two years of age, right? I would ekahamari with rapi nikola breed current, right? So within one and a half years of time, maybe 18 months onward, right? We breed them. So we breed them, right? Once they bred them, right? Maybe within next 10 months or so, we should be able to get the first calf, right? So therefore, the total age of this calf would be maybe about two, maybe two and a half years maximum to get the very first car, right? Adi padhena sathay ki ta wau deka phone apka deka hamara ke diya palave ni half of bhi karan non. So what happens, right? If we cannot do that one, we will be discussing later, right? Yeh mano unod mokna deve ni kine kapi is tarar ka taka lebal, right? So if we kind of do these management in proper way, right? What are the basic benefits a farmer can receive, right? Basically, they can reduce the mortality, 
mortality kill again mara na sattu pramana right so they can reduce the mortality because if we have kind of a maintaining a very good healthy calves within the farm or herd of a calf right so we should be able to kind of reduce the mortality rate because less diseases less issues right so very easily we can manage them so therefore it will kind of a very good benefit for the farm management right then we can increase the kind of a weaning weight of these animals right weaning means apikiri varanawa kel again so we should be able to have kind of a very good growth at the time of weaning or when we are cutting down the milk volume that we usually offer for these animals right now we may sattu den kiri pramana navatthana kota me sattu honda body weight ehe dahilla inno etta kota thama apita assure karanna puluwa me sattu karadarak nathu issarahata survive ei kiyala then and if we have very good proper management if we have extra animals there right what we can do is we can sell them right maybe we need only 50 cows or maybe kind of a herd for future replacement we thannu apita ci ay avashya wenne apita me gissara hata me manage karagen yanna kiyala ci ay harinada panaha nawath apita ayanta hatta pahagma inno eto api over capacity thiyena e kena over out numbers ekak thiyena api avashya wenne naha hena we can sell them or even the male animals right we can sell male animals or if there are any undesirable maybe these birds or kind of animals are not productive maybe they have some defects so what we can do is we can sell them right and also we can have a kind of a very good replacement stock right we can ilangata da hitana me parampara ay kiri den eka adu wega na enoda api dannu api de inna backup eka e kiyana ilangata enna inna set eka ga hondi produce karana me eke kind api de kisi prashnayak wenne na api farm eke productivity ka me thira level eke ko even we can increase to the next level based on the performances of the replacement stock right so then what happens if we kind of manage them in in proper way right api da issala kathare proper vidhi api e gollu manage karala monawada api hammena vaase kiyala in properly managed or poor management what happens yes of course they will be susceptible for lots of diseases right there will be lots of diseases maybe at the beginning of their life they will be having several diseases for an example sometimes diarrhea right toxidiosis right or maybe any kind of a respiratory issues right breathing difficulties right so those kind of things may arise time to time for these animals right so what happens if we do not manage them in proper way they will be highly susceptible to diseases right in addition So what is our main target body growth rate right in general we are expecting about 600 to 800 grams per day growth rate in most of the time at least 500 just imagine at least 500 grams of uh, body growth per day but if we do not achieve that particular growth rate so we cannot target a particular body weight in the future because there should be kind of a Uh, minimum or so standard body weight achieved at the end of a particular time for the breeding purposes of these animals right some cases they use the age some cases they use the body weight just for their performances right so if they kind of a properly or improperly managed right so what happens is they will not be able to achieve the normal growth rate in addition as a result what happens the breeding practices right and we will be seeing some infertility issues right so delayed breeding right it will take because our as i mentioned our main target is yes, of course within 2 2 and 1/2 years of time we should be able to get the first calf of these young animals right means at the very last or deka deka hamare rota apita puluwang enno one palewini patiya ganna but unfortunately if we do not if we do not manage that properly what happens eventually the breeding age on the whatever the targeted uh, age that we are expecting the first set from the standard expected days in addition there will be some infertility issues as well right so what are the kind of important aspects of calf management so we already discussed these things just to kind of
kind Recording of a, in progress. Uh, avoid any kind of infection over there. Maybe time to time, maybe once in uh, 12 hours of a time, we have to apply some uh, ID solution just to kind of assure it is kind of a very clean, dry location or place, right? Then we add some kind of oil. We usually add the Margosa oil, right? This is kind of a fly refiller, right? Take a fly refillant, take a refillant, take a refillant, take a refillant, and uh, if you do not manage, as I mentioned, we can let the cow to kind of uh, manage uh, the calf just to support the cleaning processes, right? So then what we have to do is if it is kind of a uh, environment, we need to kind of uh, uh, assure extra protection, maybe from the wind, maybe from the uh, rain, maybe from the snow. Right, or maybe hot climate or weather. So we have to provide adequate protection, providing some warmth or maybe covering, right, or bedding materials, right. So we have to kind of uh, provide those uh, uh, supportive kind of a uh, facilitation, right, just to assure these young animals are receiving the best comfort they can receive, right. So then, uh, as we discussed last time, we were kind of discussing about what, what were the kind of a basic uh, things we should do after cleaning and all those practices. So we have to assure these are getting the cholesterol. That is the first milk that we take from the mothers, right? Mother cows, so either we can direct the young ones just to go to mom and start drinking milk, or what we can do is, right? We can uh, milk the colostrum or we can harvest the colostrum from the mouth and provide separately through kind of a bottle to these young animals. So either way is okay. Tapu dakkala te kegu the practice kar. Right? Ekko amma ke bonde deno. Tapu to amma ke bonde deno. Tapu ashuva karan na be mea liters dekha the hatra the pahad the hayad the vivekila because they should be able to kind of receive at least ten percent of their birth weight as colostrum. Within first 12 hours of their life, right? So even though we just let the calf to go and lick from the mom's udder, there will be some issues, right? Sometimes there will be some issues with milk let down, milking or cholesterol formation. So what we usually do is we feed them through a bottle. so that's what uh, we basically do as soon as they are born, right? The cholesterol breeding, so we already discussed. So that is the very first milk coming through these uh, animals, right? So because the cholesterol contains lots of antibodies or maybe some other nutritions, right? Or whatever the substances which are really essential for the survival and the growth of these animals, we have to provide this cholesterol to these animals, right? So thus, these animals can build up whatever the resistance again, any kind of a diseases at the initial stage of their lives. Right? It contains lots of antibodies and vitamins like vitamin A, riboflavin, cholines, right? And then minerals like copper, iron, magnesium. And also they are very easily digestible. Since they are kind of a very young animals, and if you can remember last week we were discussing about their digestive system is not well developed to just to consume the rough materials or whatever the things because rumen, reticulum, and omasum are not well developed as soon as they are born, right? So it takes maybe five, six months to develop to a kind of a certain shape and size just to facilitate, right? So whatever the feed consumption, which are basically originated from any grasses, plants, or whatever the rough wages, right? 
Therefore, just to kind of uh, uh, facilitate easy digestion, and also there will be some uh, materials which are kind of uh, stuck within the digestive system of these newborn animals, even in humans, right? Abi, but then I go to know that digestive system is the quarter function when they are because Abi, Amma gave the thing that they are defending when they come to the same it got any nutrient nothing, so good a killer, a catholic, potty potty devil, it will at the end of the long way of sales, or a dead witch sales, one way we could reach a cotas, right? So we call it a kind of a kind of a material, so that can be very easily expulsed, right? Like a kelima, Iliot end up with cholesterol, because cholesterol is kind of a heavy, a laxative effect. Laxative means kind of a create a condition like diarrhea. Mulvela, you have a bit of diarrhea, a good condition, a catheter, no. ोस्ट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमेंट्रमे
main benefits coming from uh, whatever the antibody is so whatever the kind of uh, other nutrients right will not be efficiently absorbed to these animals because then the digestive tract the small intestine and the uh, nearby sections of the digestive system is not kind of a support you in absorbing those antibodies into the body of these animals right mokada api kiyanne saamanya pavisiya tarak wage enakota api ipa denaka hama sath ekema digestive system ekey podi podi siduru thiyena siduru kiyala kiyanne loku ara api kiyanne me hill kiyana eka neme podi siduru thiyenawa e siduru ac ओपन में ना इन्हें ओन हम देख करते हैं ये वाला भी डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम में कहाँ एक डिसीज़ तो लेंगे ना बैक्टीरिया वायरस या क्या ना पुलवंग आप इकान न्यूट्रिएंट या क्या ना पुलवंग एंटीबॉडी इस तीन ने पुलवंग या कड़ा वाले मैंगनीज माइक्रोसिया वाले आर मिनरल्स वाले तीन ने पुलव so that's why whatever we consume during that particular time period will be easily absorbed into our body. So that's why it is uh, kind of uh, found that there is no benefit of providing cholesterol after 24 hours of their lives. But still, most of the farms, they are kind of uh, providing, right? And the cholesterol may be for several days, but it is not, it is uh, kind of essential because there is no any particular benefit of providing cholesterol maybe after 24 to 36 hours of a time because it's already kind of a completely closed digestive system so then start kind of a selective absorption it passive in the digestive system absorb we call it kind of a selective absorption of nutrients into our body or animal body right So then uh, what we usually do is uh, uh, we have to assure the amount of cholesterol received these animals. But the thing is, as I mentioned earlier, there are some issues, right? Maybe uh, the cow, the mother animal can die during the parturition process, right? They are marriageable. Or maybe some issues with milk let down, right? Which means, as I mentioned, api ke sataage tanaburu lara, adaye kara kiri, nege bo kari prashne hai. Maybe some diseases like mastitis, right? So therefore, what happens is we have to look for another animal. Api ke foster animal ke to just to obtain the cholesterol, or maybe the whatever the cholesterol stored in the farm or the refrigerator or the freezer. So what we have to do is we have to defend on those kind of whatever the available cholesterol in the farm which are not coming from the original mother or what we can do is we can prepare an artificial cholesterol just to feed these animals so we have to add some cow milk maybe egg white lime water several oils right as ingredients and antibiotics and clean water and we mix it and prepare kind of a artificial cholesterol which is pretty kind of a similar to the composition of the natural cholesterol and the kind of a benefits which can be kind of obtained which are pretty similar to the natural art cholesterol but unfortunately in some cases which is not 100 percent equal in kind of a composition in some cases because the cholesterol quality may be unique to the ma or the dam or the mother animal. The hitana samarita amma kine kino na tang na eladena kino eladena ge cholesterol kine thora mehti na ingredients oringe na quality ekka meke thora basic nutrient quality cholesterol kala thina basic nutrient sabre thina pula. Samahar lata amma ge ananni vechu unique vechu podi podi antibodies. Emana tay amari sekali. Dah kaya dilihat dulu, tay ag parang parang ini namun hari specific resistance yang kita ada dulu. Ini okum antibody ini sebab kita ini hema characteristics apa itu dengan apa. So this is just the kind of a basic composition, not the kind of a original which is very kind of a hundred percent similar to the mom's cholesterol. So that's the basic disadvantage of using artificial cholesterol. But at least it is better have anything nothing. In the farm. Yeah. So, in that water, now 
මේක හරි දෙන්න පුළුවන් නම් වැදගත් නැත්තම් ඒ සත්තු අසන්තාවයට පත් වෙන නිසා right so then the milk feeding right so we already discussed that one maybe after 2 or 3 days because in general maybe 2 3 days they are feeding cholesterol then what we usually do is we will be feeding the whole milk so whatever the milk the fresh milk right so it depends the volume will be depend on the farm management decisions but uh, in general at least we have to provide maybe 4 liters of milk per day aduma 1 liter hatarak na dawasata bedda na in the mornings maybe 2 liter in the evening maybe 2 liter so that's the basic kind of a guideline just to feed these animals right but there are some uh, kind of a new kind of a practices as well sometimes they are feeding very high volume of milk maybe during the first few weeks of their lives like maybe 9 liters of milk per day which means about 4.5 liters of milk during one feeding or maybe if they are feeding three times per day 3 liters of milk at each time right so what we kind of assure what we have to assure is maybe about 8 to 10% of milk right from their normal body weight has to be fed as the minimum requirement of these nutrients for these animals right after kind of a several weeks of time maybe mostly 2 3 but it is recommended to offer maybe within first week of their lives but most of the time maybe after 4 weeks on average right they usually introduce right some uh, solid feed materials for these animals sometimes concentrates right and can pellets with it again and in some cases hay or kind of a mixture of uh, grasses hay uh, some concentrates right to these animals just to kind of use or kind of a familiar price these animals with whatever the nutrients they will be consuming in the future life right means at the use karana they will go look here be what me da asala tawa tika da was again sati again at sati again na pulwa maas again na pulwa maas dekha to again wenna pulwa ඔයගොල්ලෝ කන්සියුම් කරන්න මෙන්න මේ වගේ කෑම තමයි ඉස්සරහට කියන එක just to kind of a train them right and also the same time it will provide some kind of a stimulation to development of the rumen reticulum and omasum of these animals මොකද මම අර කිව්වනේ අර ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ rumen reticulum හරියට හැදිලා නැහැ කියලා initial age එකෙන් මතක ඇති එතකොට ඒකත් ස්ටිමුලේට් කරන්න පුළුවන් මේ සත්තුන්ට චුට්ට චුට්ට මේ වගේ solid materials ඒ කයින් එක ඉන්ට්‍රොඩියුස් කරන්න පටන් ගත්තට පස්සේ රයිට් සෝ when we feed these animals with milk right there are several ways right one is called natural feeding natural feeding means we let the animals to be with the mom right we can let the young animals to be with the mom but the thing is right it is not kind of as i mentioned previously we cannot assure these animals are getting the minimum requirement of milk during a particular day from their mom right. sometimes they will be kind of a drinking a lesser volume of milk sometimes higher volume of milk which is more than the requirement for these animals right it can happen right but that is the very easiest way less labor intensive we can let the animal to be with their mom and let the animal to consume whatever the milk with the mom right so that's the kind of a way we are doing the natural feeding but thing is when we harvest the milk api kena amma gin kiri ganna kota we have to assure just to leave some milk in the udder which can be consumed or drink by the young animal right so that's what we have to do we have to assure that one. ඒ අම්මාට කිය කිරි ටික අපි සියට සියම්ම හවස් කරලා ගන්නේ නැහැ මිල් කරලා ගන්නේ නැහැ පොඩි ප්‍රමාණයක් ඉතුරු කරනවා මෙයාට අනිවාර්යයෙන් මේ මෙයාගේ පැටියට බොන්න chance එකක් වෙනවා right so what are the disadvantages so that we kind of discuss a little bit a little earlier right we do not know what is the exact production of milk right from the mother cow because we will not be harvesting the whole volume of milk from the mother cow so that's the first thing right and we have to leave some milk just to consume by the young cow right in addition 
the cow calf bond ya ammai patiya athara thiyena bond ekak it will be more strong as long as we are letting them to be together right api e dennata ekata inda dena chance ekak wedi wenna wedi wenna e dennata athara thiyena connection ekak godak wedi wenna right that is not a good thing right yes of course somebody might be thinking okay in terms of uh, what you call uh, animal welfare or maybe kind of a uh, be kind of a man kind or human nature is to be with whatever the relatives together like mom and their kids together right but our main target is just to kind of uh, have a profitable uh, economical farm right and also we want to harvest as much as milk right from the mom right and we have to assure at the same time the young one is getting the optimum level of nutrients right how we will once we let them to be together what happens is they will be bonding strongly right and then how that is strongly bond you know right and when they have kind of having that kind of a strong friendship or relationship right mom and uh, the kid right the next step is they will not be showing the heat signs for the next level of production or whatever the insemination or the next uh, level of uh, what you call uh, the breeding process right the patiya hambela patiya amma eka dipuna godak kelata e amma gi mena heat signs e kiyanne aayi yata ilanga patiya hadanna puluwan breeding stage ekata enna puluwan kiyana conditions tika tika අඩුවෙන්න පටන් ගන්නවා මොකද එයා ගොඩක් ලා ට්‍රයි කරන්න එයාගේ පැටියව සර්වයිව් කරගන්න සේව් කරගන්න අලුතෙන් පැටි එක හදන්න නෙමෙයි. එතකොට ඒ දෙන එකට ඉන්න ඉන්නේ බොන්ඩ් එක වැඩි වෙනවා. එතකොට පුළුවන් තරම් අර කැරක්ටරිස්ටික් ඒ අම්මා තව පැටි එක හදන්න තියෙන chance එක ටික ටික අඩු වෙලා එයා අර පැටියත් එක්ක බොන්ඩින් වෙන chance එකක් පටන් ගන්න. ඒ වගේ ලෙවල් එකකට යන්න පටන් ගන්න. So we should kind of avoid that kind of situation because this is a farm basically targeting on milk production or whatever the target income during a particular time or a particular year so that's why we have to kind of a kind of a natural feeding right artificial feeding yes you can see what we usually do is we first harvest all the milk from the mom and we kind of a uh, divide that into kind of a specific portions this is for the selling purposes this is for the the calf or the young one which means based on the body weight 8 to 10% of milk will be kind of provided for these animals through these buckets or maybe through the bottles right me wage buckets only provide karanna puluwa eh matta bottle ekin provide karanna puluwa this is more effective and more efficient because we know the young ones are getting a particular volume of milk during a period with them with their mom we do not know the amount that they are usually consume amma thekino da api danna eya kachchara bonawada wedi embi uwada adu embi uwada but here no we know this one we know the volume that we offer and we know the volume that is kind of a left off so the difference is the amount that they consume hitanna api patiyata denawa liter 4 liter 3/2 liter marak me biila thiyena me liter 500 ek ithura lagena ethoda api attarama danna me sada 3/2 marak amma biu wage right dawasaka නමුත් අර අම්මත් එක්ක කියනවා අපි දන්නේ නැහැ කොච්චර බිව්වද කොච්චර බොන්න බැරි වුණාද සමහර වසර බැරි වුණා බොන්න පුළුවන් සමහර වසර අඩුවෙන් බොන්නත් පුළුවන් right so that's why we kind of a uh, provide this uh, practice this artificial breeding right At the same time we can determine the total volume of milk produced by the mom so the amount of milk consumed by the young animals right in addition as, as i mentioned the relationship or the bond with the mom and the young one kind of a very low not that right so then we can easily kind of a wean them api regular elesiyama kiri waranna puluwan e wage avasthawa aawata pass nattam wenne kiri warana ekak godak kala wata prashnayak wenna puluwan so what are the disadvantages under those circumstances right which is very labor intensive right individually we have to feed the young animals right so it is very labor intensive and sometimes what happens is uh, the issues with the digestive system so if they are drinking milk from their mom right the milk temperature is the body temperature of their mom api dan amma gema kiri bonawa nan amma ge kiri walin ena amma body e 37 37 kiyala 
ඒ ආසන්න සමාන පැටිය බෝය but when animal separately what we usually do is harvest them right first thing so we then we the milk in the normal tone we even in the refrigerated uh, for some time so then the temperature will go down maybe to the room temperature not the body temperature of their mom or the young one right so then milk will be a little bit cold and then once we offer that milk it can create some digestive disorder some diarrhea or kind of a loose feces coming out from their digestive system so those things can be occurred so therefore what we have to do is we have to kind of a heat it up pasteurized right the milk before offering to these young animals right sometimes uh, the contaminations may be too much because we are handling milk we use lots of utensils baskets and buckets and uh, the milk uh, is or soft contamination if we are not clean them properly එක්කම් ක්ලීන් කරන්න නැතුව ඉන්පොප විතර මැනේජ් කරන්න මොකද වෙන්නේ ෆුල් කන්ටෙමිනේට් වෙලා ඩයරියා වගේ කන්ඩිෂන්ස් වෙන්න පුළුවන්. the next one is uh, when we want to do kind of a milking right right so what happens is uh, when the animal is sucking from the their mom there will be kind of a stimulus there will be kind of a special stimulus coming through their body which is called suckling stimulus you can may sattungen ammagen ek sattu kiri bona kota podi reaction ekak atta reflection ekak kenawa podi signal ekak etta kota wenne ara ogalana mataka na you can remember last time we were talking about uh, in general what happens is uh, this is drinking milk we have to kind of a slightly towards upward Right. otherwise what happens is the milk will directly right the milk will directly enter into the rumen not going to the abomasum but the rumen is not well developed so we already discussed that thing, right however when we are kind of a doing some artificial kind of a, uh, feeding using a bottle or bucket what happens is that bypassing that stimulus will not be there to the optimum level අර අපි ආර්ටිෆිෂල් දෙනකොට ඒක එච්චරම හොඳින් හැදෙන්නේ නැහැ රිෆ්ලෙක්ෂන් එක රයිට් ඒතර මොකද්ද වෙන්නේ ඉසොෆේජස් එක හරහා ගිහිල්ලා සමහර විට විච් විල් ඩිරෙක්ට් දෙම් ඉන්ටු ද රූමන් ඇස් වි ඩිස්කස් ලාස්ට් ටයිම් දෙන් ද රූමන් ඉස් නොට් වෙල් ඩෙවලප් දෙයර් ඉස් නෝ මයික්‍රෝ ඔර්ගනිසම්ස් ටු ది ඔප්ටිමම් ලෙවල් ද ෂේප් ද සයිස් ද ෆන්ක්ෂන් ඉස් නොට් අප් ටු ది බෙස්ට් ලෙවල් සෝ ෆා රයිට් වොට් හැපන්ස් දේ විල් බි කයින්ඩ් ඔෆ් ස්ටාර්ට් to kind of a degrade in the rumen and it will create some adverse conditions right api gane kiri nikam pal wenawa kiyala e digest wenna api bihan naha microorganisms lan naha rumen eke wage kiri hemala pura digest wenne naha right so those kind of issues can be resulted because of this kind of artificial feed right so therefore we have to kind of a consider those factors very carefully whether we are going with the natural feeding or artificial feed right then as we discuss we have to introduce rough ages or the concentrates as soon as possible because if we can wean them very easily or very earlier we can save some volume of milk and we can sell that volume to the consumers and get some money right but if we kind of a practice just to offer milk for a longer time period for an example 5 or 6 month of a time so we have to kind of a lose some volume of milk because that is basically dedicated for the young ones we cannot sell them right but if we can stop providing milk as soon as possible right in the world they have found that maybe even within 4 weeks of time සාමාන්‍ය මාසයක විතර වගේ කාලෙක ඉඳලා කිරි දෙනක නවත්තන්න පුළුවන් මේ සත්තුන් හරියට මැනේජ් කරන right even i did some research right several research with young dairy cows right Because I was able to kind of wean them maybe within six to seven weeks of age, even less than uh, two months of age, right? So, with the higher, paying, patang, you know, wean karana, with the higher, half the way, I'm going to completely wean karana. I'm going to do some research, man, karpoor, 
pull over, they pull one muna, right? So which means in general they are going for maybe three months, twelve weeks, right? Sometimes sixteen weeks, right? Even more than that in some cases, like in our country, they are still going for maybe three four months without weaning and only providing milk for these animals because these animals are not up to the standard growth and not being able to consume prophages and whatever the other feeds provided other than milk, right? But if we can wean them at least by six weeks, at least two months of age, right? What we can do is we can save a significant volume of milk and we can sell them and earn some money, right? Therefore, those things has to be kind of a considered when we are kind of a managing a dairy calf, right? Then the weaning, right? So what we are going to do during the weaning, weaning which means stop giving milk for these animals. Right? So there are several methods how we can wean an animal. A dairy calf, right? Dairy calf. Some people in some countries, some farms, they kind of think or wait until the birth weight of these animals get doubled. Some are cut people. We have a birth weight take a double weight. So once they receive their kind of body weight, which is twice the size of their birth weight, so then they will be an they just only think about okay, we are waiting until they are reach a body weight which is twice the size or the weight of their birth weight. So that's a one way, right? The other way, some people just stay until they are reach a certain age, regardless of their body weight, they are waiting until a certain age. That's what practicing even in other countries and even in our country, right? Okay, we will be weaning them by 12 weeks of age, three months, four months, five months, regardless of their body weight. Samahala dekho lo body weight take kani tan hai, arme aala sati dol hai dama pe weaning karan. Age ke baar, baaran hai me age, right? Nae apni me hum baat. There are some, the basic standard method, right? Those are also acceptable method, but the modern recommended or recent recommended standard method is we should wait until they are kind of a consuming concentrate or any rough material, right? Rough age, like TMR ration or whatever, the hay, grasses or whatever, about one kilogram or Two to three consecutive days. It are not a sate kinama, a sata kiribonata, namut, a sata kiribonagama, a colo cama kanda patangano, arabic or a bean, you may concentrate swargas and rahar, emanatang rafages, dry matters, they are consumed, right? And we kind of measure their intakes. We thought a karano, may my intakes have a measure karano, maybe daily or maybe at least once in two days of a time. Then we wait until they kind of consume at least one kilogram of particular feed for two to three consecutive days. It under the Satek Kiribibi no Satagi Vaisatam Sati Pahai Kilitan. It over Sati Pahai, then ticket to Kabi Barnabala Balanoia, Kutcher, that was a good rough ages car. It are concentrated Sandra Harkutcher Kano. Sati Hayavagi Vinakota is Sata on the Kiloeka Kutra Kanda. Fresh waiting, fresh waiting, kilo kapitra mea de. Eater was a balna good, that was the katunak maya, kiloeka, kiloeka, kiloeka mano. Yeah, still drinking milk, right? But just consume at the same time, concentrate one kilogram at least for two to three consecutive days. Ekadigar that was eh, at the kano, etat kano, and it that. Kiloeka, kiloeka, kiloeka. But at least one kg. Okay. Then that is the recommendation. Okay. So just observe their intakes and wait until consuming at least one kg of these feeds concentrate for two to three consecutive days. 
So then we just skip the age and the weight. We just depend only on their feed intake or the dry matter intake. So then it can be uh, maybe four weeks of age, six weeks of age, or maybe sometimes 12 weeks, six months, you never know. So as soon as you see these animals are consuming a kind of a particular targeted amount of these concentrate, what you do is you just stop giving milk for these animals. And right. So that's the basic recommendation. So they, but still some people are wait for the body weight, doubling of their birth weight, or reaching to a certain age. Just to kind of wean the animal from the milk consumption, right? So then the housing. So we have to discuss about the housing systems for the young ones and the adult ones, right? So when we kind of uh, discuss about the housing systems for these animals, there is no any kind of a uh, standard way because it depends on the weather condition in some cases, right? In some countries, they have winter season, means uh, they have uh, hot season like a summer, fall spring winter so based on those uh, kind of a uh, climate so we have to kind of uh, manage their housing systems in proper way just to kind of uh, adhere to whatever the weather conditions right in some cases we can provide the individual pets for these animals right individually then the polo right all the animals are provided with individual pets right only one animal is kind of a uh, kept in one particular pen, right, or a cage, right. So very easily we can uh, observe these animals, right, and also less chance of getting some diseases, like contagious diseases, 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 chance right, and what we have to do is we have to maintain a very kind of a clean place with very good bedding materials for these animals, right, and we have to provide uh, separate uh, buckets or separate uh, ways of getting water and feeds to these animals, right? It should be available all the time, right? So they, we should have kind of a minimum floor space, right? At least... Uh, 1.2 by 1.2 meters in uh, space, we have to kind of uh, provide a minimum space. Such kind of a thing is like this, right? So these animals are in individual cages, right? So this is the calf, right? So there are two buckets provided for these animals. One is with the water, one is with concentrate. So this should be available all the time for these animals, right? No any restrictions, specifically water. Maturana Kohomat restrict karanabe. Eka me condition eka water should be available as soon as they are born. May Vatura Aniwara is a type of the Lamati. But thou say maybe packet with the Pasidala the Kana Vatura then do. Right. So that is one of the requirements. Maybe within two, three days of a time we can start providing some concentrate. May water concentrate ah Sandra Har that was taken to Pasidala. So this is how a uh, kind of an individual pen looks like. So they are separately uh, kept in individual cages and provide a very good bedding material and uh, no kind of a contamination touch with the other animal. And is touch individual. So we can easily observe them for their health, growth, or any other kind of parameters, right? Other one is group housing system. So group housing systems, what we usually do is we usually keep maybe six to eight animals in one particular area, right? So, but we have to have kind of assure they are getting kind of a minimum uh, space per animal, right? And also we should have to provide a very good bedding and also kind of a well-drained soil or floor, right? We have to check for those things every day. And if the bedding materials is not up to the standard, what we have to do is we have to clean it and add new type of a bedding material, right? Then we have to provide the water 
and feeds, right? There are several places, uh, troughs, right? So we have to use those things just to provide the water and the uh, feeds for these animals. Something like this is one way of providing milk for these animals because they are in large groups, right? Minimum eight to ten animals or six to eight. This kind of a kind of a container with these nipples, right? So then they are start kind of a drinking milk, water, and those kind of things has to be provided in this manner. So then the housing capacity of uh, the number of uh, pens required for these animals, right? So it depends on the farm, right? So number of cows are born during particular year, particular time period, so we can decide it, right? After the culture of pens on in the kinaka, we decide karana pull in a in a pramania. A bit hitagan in the expert karana, nambegan, okay, hit the hitagan. Culture of houses pramania, pens pramania, may subtunta only the kid, right? Name of the farm make it only the kid, right? So these things we already discussed, but I will just briefly show them again, right? What are the methods or what are the practices as soon as they are born, right? We have to provide some identification methods, right? Ear tagging, notching, tattooing, or we can use some photographs, right? This is kind of a ear tagging. So we already discussed last time what are the methods that we practice for these animals as soon as they are born, right? Just to identify the animals, we can practice several methods. So this is kind of a one method or very popular, but it's still expensive method. Which is called ear tagging, right? This is ear notching, right? Ear notching means we are using a ear notcher, right? We notch the ears of these animals, right? Like this, right? right? So this is very popular among what you call uh, uh, pigs most of the time, swine, but even in uh, cattle, they are practicing in some cases. So they have given a particular number to the notch, right? If it is in the, on the left side or if it is on the right uh, side of the face or the right ear, right? They have kind of a given a specific number to that particular place, right? So this is number 10, this is number 30, this is 50, right? This is number 5, 3, 1, something like that. So they have given a particular number, right? This is here tattooing. This is the tattooing machine. So we already discussed that one and I showed that to you, right? So this is the way, one way of providing kind of an identification method for these animals, right? Then we discuss about the dehorning process, right? Dehorning means we have to remove the horn or the horn bun, right? So we you will be using different uh, type of uh, methods for that one, but more popular way is using kind of a Hot iron bar, right? And then just kind of a burn the ear bud, right? So once we burn that one very easily, it can be removed. The cells can be removed and it can be a kind of a rudimentary status, right? So we will not be seeing any kind of a growth of horn after properly practicing this method, which is called dehorning, or even we say sometimes de budding, de budding kill again. Horn bud dega wagi ko doubling ari kudi chega amki na horn nega khade ne pula kodi bud dega e bud dega kapala ari kiri manda mai pindi karai right so then the heifers right once they are weaned right the female animals so they kind of uh, uh, stop consuming milk right and then we are calling them as heifers right we already kind of briefly discussed this one as well so they are called heifers. So they are no longer drinking any milk. They are just consuming some concentrates or rough materials, right? So this is very important stage because these are the one within next few months are becoming mothers, right? Right? So therefore, we have to take care of them very carefully, even though they are not giving any kind of a benefits within kind of their shorter period of their life they are not giving any specific benefits right more than me call they are just eating right 
eating and resting. That's all. That's what they are doing. But still, we have to take care of them very carefully because very short period of a time, within the next four or five months, they will be the milk producing kind of a animals or the mothers in the farm. Right? So, what are the basic objectives? Like uh, when we kind of uh, taking care of these animals, the main thing is that we have to take care of the farm. 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 No. So, therefore, we have to kind of uh, assure them. They are not going to die because of any reason. So we have to reduce the mortality rate. And we they should be reaching their targeted puberty at the age of 12 months, at least, on average, right? Then become pregnant within next three to four months of time, right? Puberty actually occurred. Then within next few months of a time, maybe four to six months of a time, right? They should be pregnant and giving birth to the young ones at the age of 24 to 30 months of time, which means two to two and a half of a time years of a time, they should be able to give the birth to the first calf of their life. Right. And after giving kind of a birth within the next two months. Right, or maybe within maximum three months of a time, right? They should start or they should be ready for the next breeding process or the next kind of a breeding cycle. So that's the main target. So breeding insemination it is right so that's the cycle so that is kind of a cycle so they need to be trained and kind of a maintained in a healthy manner just to support that kind of a process right So what are the things that we usually offer? We can offer rough ages, concentrates, right? We are not going to feed them with very expensive materials at this particular time period. Otherwise, if we are going to provide very expensive diet, which is useless because they will not be providing any benefit to us, other than just kind of a consuming feeds and just resting, right? Because they are still the young ones or the heifers, right? Then, during the breeding season, right, we have to check for the heat signs, right? Heat signs means they are ready for the breeding or the conception. A heat signs kill again, they go to the master. So we have passe the heart of a kid to an abota make all the pen under patangan now heat signs. You can go to the pen and up, mama, they're ready, right, for the breeding process, right? So then, kind of a uh, the farm, the management, right, has to be ready for the breeding process. Right, because it is farmers' kind of a skill and responsibility just to kind of identify the heat signs. Right, heat signs. The animals will be giving some kind of a signals to the people. Okay, I am ready now. Right, so therefore the farmer will have to kind of check these animals frequently once they reach a particular age frequently. 
and see whether these animals are ready for the brain. Right. So what are the symptoms or characteristics, not a symptom, symptoms is kind of a disease, but this is kind of a characteristics shown by these animals that they are under a particular heat period. Right. So what they usually do, they let other animals to be mounted by mounted on their bodies, right? They go to let them know. I can eat that they know. And it's not to know. Taman ke anger udha piti passe udha petra na ge. Sometimes the animal is trying to mount on other animals. A go lang anger udha ge in that they know. Maya anitya anger udha ge in that try ke, right? So if you check the wall ones outside uh, of the reproductive section, which you can observe outside, you can wall by area ke, which is kind of a becoming reddish in color. Swollen and moisture in color, right? And sometimes the watery mucus is kind of hanging from the vulva, right? And uh, they are restless, right? And this is an uncomfortable environment. Right? So they are kind of not eating well, right? Frequently urinate, right? Sometimes they kind of start billowing, kind of a giving some sounds right and uh, they raise their tail right raise tail right and also their milk production will be very low during that particular time period so that's are the major signs of heat for these animals so the farmer or the manager will have to kind of a, be carefully observe these animals right and see these signs and start the breeding process right so, what is the age that we are kind of a start breeding, right? So, basically, if you can remember, right, they reach the breeding age of puberty within uh, 12 to 14 months of a time, right? But we are not going to use that age just for the breeding process. We are waiting for the third cycle, right? Samani tungani cycle because we should let them grow enough, right, to be ready for kind of a pregnancy period or kind of a gestation period, right. So what we usually do is, right, we kind of a use a kind of a stud bowl, right, right, or kind of artificial insemination process, you know, AI for this kind of a breeding process, right? So these are the signals, right? You can see sometimes these animals are trying to kind of go to another animal and start to mount on that particular animal, right? Or as animal let other animals to mount on their body, right? So that's the main thing. So you observe this is kind of a uh, heat detection guide, right? They call heat detection guide. They have a basic science. As you can see, these were the basic things that we discussed, right? So that is really shown by these animals during that particular time period. So we can observe them, right? They are restless, right? Uh, kind of a tail is raised, urination. Just let them to be mounted on others, right? Mucus discharge. So those, once you observe these kind of a signs, okay, you know these animals are ready for this particular process. Then you will start the breeding process, right? Right, so as I mentioned, why do, why we are not going to do the breeding as we see their first heat cycle? Because these animals are, even though they are showing kind of a heat sign, the breeding signals, right? But if you breed them at very young age, what happens? Their growth can be affected, right? And they are very difficult in kind of a situation for the calving process, right? And also milk production will go down. Therefore, what we usually do is, we wait until they reach 18 months at least, right? Then they are kind of a physiologically mature. That's the age. They are physiologically mature enough to bear this kind of a period or gestation period, right? 
So, in some cases, farmers wait as we did for the weaning process, a particular kind of a body weight, right? For an example, just imagine, right, a Pisian calf, right? A Frisian cow or whatever the one. This kind of a particular age, maybe about 500 kilograms, their mature body weight, or maybe uh, 1,000 kilograms, right? Apitam. No, I'm going to Frisian cow, heifer, right? They are mature, right? Permanent, but the, the mature body weight is maybe about 1,000 kilograms, right? So then the farmer calculates the body weight, which is about 70% of their mature body weight. And once they reach that particular body weight, they do the breeding process. I go to the Karani, they are a bean caravagi, some high body weight, take a gambalang in no, some high age, take a gambalang in no, some high air cam, kind of promani, level leg in a gambalang in a breeding or that Karanda Pulaka Kama, a people, some money, master doll hand, the other thing, he's signing a deck, tapi avala, feed Karani and then, but they go physiological ego look grow a level leg at a patty at the ragging in. A carrot then ego long a carving difficulty in the Puluang, growth the gratu in the Puluang, milk production necker. Natural and Puloga, Pasha Gudak in the pool, right? Ekinisa Gudakalan Karan, Hariagi, mature body weight, take kilo the Ahana, right? Ehina, Ekin see it had the crash curve wage jagged out of passe, right? Egolo Gila, A Jagedi, that the A body weight Tegedi, A Satuma breed cut. So that's how they practice it. Sometimes they reach until a particular age, like eighteen months, twenty months, right? Or They reach or they wait until these animals reach about 70% of their mature body weight. They go mature not a person or a breeding process. Right? Then once we are done with all the breeding, whether it is natural breeding or whether it is artificial breeding, right? How we determine whether these animals are already pregnant, right? Apni dhanga artificial period ne akara, natural period ne karna. Apni dhanga gaande be amisi toh pregnant be laadhe na. Apni dekha paatagi ande be, right? Okay, we wait for some time and see these animals are not coming to the estrus, right? Apni dhanga ara apni humans lagi wagi pregnant to na hamay ka bahir lakshana dhamma. Ye adala kaanta wagi hamay dhamma female animal ke. Menstrual cycle like a the current natural in the patanta. It's a vehina, some are in humans like a females like a every 28 days of a time is start the menstrual cycle. So once we see the menstrual cycle is stopped, okay, then we can suspect, we cannot say, okay, because she or she is pregnant, that's why her cycle is not working. No, we have to wait. That's the first one, right. So then even that is same for these uh, dairy cows, right? Maybe 18, 21 days, like that was the So if they are not coming to the estrus within that particular time period, okay, that is one observation. Then what we can do is we do a specific thing called rectal palpation, right? We put our hand through the rectum, not the uh, reproductive tract, through the digestive system from the back side. What we call it's like a kind of a solid thing inside the uterus. If it is pregnant, you can feel kind of a rough or tough material. It's kind of a light thing, is kind of a staying inside the uterus of these animals. Or we can do ultrasound scanning like we do for the humans, right? Or we can check the progesterone level, right? The progesterone level. And if the progesterone level is high, okay, we can suspect that, okay, she is pregnant. Or we can confirm that she is pregnant, right? Then, how we kind of manage such kind of an animal, right? Basically, what we do is we kind of rear them in a kind of a stress-free environment, right? 
no any outside uh, encroachers, predators, or any other animals are coming into these kind of uh, uh, environment, right? So we have to kind of uh, uh, maintain all the kind of a standard requirements for these animals, right? And we have to maintain a proper record, the feed intake, maybe water intake if possible, right? The health records, right? The production record, right? Everything kind of a has to be maintained in a proper order, right? So why we manage these kind of a pregnant cow, right? Why? First one is they should be achieving a satisfactory goal. Right? Me pat out and then a fetus center. Right? They should achieve a kind of a satisfactory goal. Right? And also the, we have to ensure their memory system, the other, right, should grow to the standard or the optimum level. We should be able to support the young ones by providing milk. Or feeds for the young animals, right? And also, we want to kind of build up some energy, some reserves, right? Body reserves for these animals just to facilitate the parturition. Again, delivery facilitate karana is that energy energy level up karana. And also, we have to eventually facilitate an easy delivery of. Or kind of an easy delivering process at the end of the gas station or pregnancy period of these animals. Now, if you have a gas station period, you can see that 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 you can so, what is the period of gestation for these animals, which is about 280 days? It's like almost 10 months. It's pretty kind of a, uh, similar to the humans, right? The gestation period, which is about 280 days, right? So, if you kind of uh, observe, right, what is the total body weight gain, right, is, which is about 100 kilograms at least, right? Uh, in terms of mother animal or the mother cow, which get maybe about 75 minimum weight gain. And the fetus, the young one, is developing inside the body, will be kind of reaching about 25 kilograms in body weight in minimum. Right? But it can go up to maybe about 40, 45 kilograms in some cases. Right? So as humans, right, even like humans, like the if you kind of divide them into trimesters, right? First trimester, second trimester, and third trimester, almost uh, two thirds of growth is happening during the last three months, right? Maybe until the six months, seven months, the fetal or the fetus or whatever the embryo, right, is growing inside the mom is about 10 kilograms maximum. Right? But once it reached to the seven month, eight month, nine month, that's the time it start to grow fast, which is reaching about 35 to kilograms in body weight at the end of the gestation period. So, fetus growth So the animals, the mother animals should kind of eat lots of feeds, right? Basically the rough ages, sometimes concentrate. That is just to kind of, uh, what do you call it? Build up body reserves, right? Specifically during last two to three weeks of time, we have to provide a very good uh, diet for these animals, right? Just to kind of uh, steam up, kind of uh, build up the body reserves that is to facilitate the parturition or delivery process of these animals, right? Near parturition or delivery, right? So basically, we have to kind of uh, provide a very protective harmful, peaceful environment with very clean cages, right? We can provide uh, separate pens or separate houses, right? And we have to observe if any kind of a parturition sign or delivery sign. So we can see several uh, signs externally if they are nearing the delivery process, right? So we usually can predict the day 
of craft, right? Like humans, okay, this is the expected date of delivery. It is not precisely kind of a correct right, all the time, but you can kind of a predict it, right? Most of the time we can predict it, right? Without any kind of an issue, right? Sometimes we predict based on the size of the fetus or the rate of growth, the date of the conception or the kind of a breeding. So we know we can kind of predict based on the breeding calendar, which or when these animals are going to give birth to their young ones, right? But we predict the calendar, breeding calendar, right? So then what are the signs of saturation? Or oh, what are the signs that indicates these animals are ready for the delivery now, right? So we kind of started with the breeding and then the management of these pregnant cows. And then what is so the, what are the signs of parturition, like the signs of heat signs, right? Heat signs, well, yeah, breed karanda ready, deliver karanda ready, kira then api dakina lakshan, right? So basically, we see those uh, signs maybe within uh, 10 to 15 hours before most of the time, but uh, the yeah, animal is very matured once already given birth to maybe several cows. Within two, three hours of a time, we see that these animals are clearly ready for the parturition, right? We can see the other, other kind of try to congest. We have put the other which are you know. Right? So then the pelvic ligaments, right? The around the tail and kind of a pelvis area. Tail area, right? All the ligaments, right? All the kind of a bones and whatever the ligaments attach these bones start relaxing. You are relaxing. The tail start to elevate. Tail leg would have cleared up the head like it, right? Then the vulva area. If you see the outside of this, uh, the whatever the vulva, right? You can see the swollen, uh, reddish color vulva. Lots of mucus is discharging from the vulva. Frequently urinate, right? They stop eating. The mother cow stop eating, right? And dilation of the vulva. Vulva area get get dilate. Pene patanga na adhya buru le ne patang. And then the restlessness, right? The animals are kind of seeing like stress sometimes, right? They do not eat. They just uh, feel very uncom kind of uncomfortable, right? They just cannot stand or they're just trying to sit or sleep. Then again, stand up within very few minutes, very short period of a time, right? And uh, the calf is rotate into their normal delivery position. So those are the basic signs of parturition. So we are about to say that we petiya earlier than the when we came in, lakshana dekha. After that, they get to know in the last time. Hey, for Kerala, first time breed with check. Then after that, they do have quite in the lapin. Then after that, they are not. That's what they are mature with. Then after that, they are not. Then after that, they are not. Then after that, they are not. So during the calving process, what happens is uh, they just start dilating the vulva, pelvic region, right? So everything kind of uh, become very kind of uh, dilated and lots of urination, lots of discharge from the vulva, right? And other starts to become very kind of uh, larger in size, right? Sometimes you can see like an edema, an edema in the vulva, right? So those kind of things can be observed during the calving process right so then one it is ready for the carving what you can see is the uterus right right so it's begin the contraction process right so it's like a this the support of some uh, hormones right so it's like distressing so they just start the contraction process so giving some kind of signals right to further enhance the Whatever the parturition signs, the dilations and secretions, right? Everything kind of enhanced or intensified, right? Maybe within uh, four, so four hours of time, once you start seeing these signal signs, you can see a new calf is born, right? Sometimes if some kind of a things happens, it may go up to maybe 
at least one day showing these signals. Maybe some issues with the carving with that situations, right? So these are some signals, right? So you can see the other is kind of enlarged, right? And kind of a mucus is discharged from the vulva. This is the vulva area, right? And it is kind of a swollen and reddish, red, kind of a reddish in color, right? The vulva area is like, uh, swollen, you know? Pratu part of the villa, you know, Adeka Tikak Vishal in the Patangano, mucus sega discharge in the Patangano. So these are the basic signs or the signals of parturition, which means within very few hours of a time, she will give birth to the young animal. Right. So this is what happens. This is the normal birth position, right? So usually the front leg will come south first, right? So this is the birth position. This is what we call the birth position. The front leg should be coming out of the vagina or the vulva first, and then the head and the rest of the body, right? So this is the normal birth position. As you can see, the head is pointed towards the vulva area. So this is the rectum. This is the digestive system, last section. So you, you put hand from here and bring it over here. This is the birth position now. Our normal position again, never the birth position is cell, head area. Then you can touch it clearly. Touch it through the uh, rectum palpation and then see whether someone is living inside the body of this mother animal, right? So what happens is uh, lots of powerful contractions will be there inside the uterus, right? So those are kind of uh, uh, involuntary contractions, but same time you can provide some voluntary contractions. You also try to, the animals also try to kind of provide some contractions to the stomach just to support those uterine contractions, right? That is just to kind of uh, push the fetus outside the body of the mother and right? So then what happens is the calf's head basically uh, passes through the vulva area, right? So then the water bag, right? So basically what happens is uh, before the start of the calving, the water bag usually coming first out of the body, right? It is kind of filled with uh, kind of a fluid, right? Amniotic fluid, we call it amniotic fluid. So that is the one basically support the dilation and lubrication of the passageway of the calf when the do is the delivery process, right? This is what happens. You can first see the water bag, right? Coming out from the mother end, right? So then the animal is coming with the front leg, right? Normal, this is a normal, right? Normal delivery, but there are some abnormal ways, right? So in that situation, we have to assist the mother cow just to support the birth of the young one, right? But this is a normal birth uh, kind of a practice. You can see this kind of a observation, right? So this is the next step, right? What happens? The front feet, right? Front two feet basically appear first. First, come uh, out of the vulva of these animals, right? Then you can see the head is coming out, right? Within one kind of a uh, session. So, head is coming out, but still you can see, right? So, the other is looks like a enlarged, swollen, and congested, right? Make a little bellow, make soft. Someone in a day, someone is soft. And in general, it is in a soft nature, right? But if you touch this one, which is not soft, it is kind of a hard in position because lots of contractions and movements are going inside the body, right? So the animals, all the kind of uh, tissues become a little stiff, right? right? So then within the next few minutes, you can see the shoulders and all those things are coming out through the vulva or the vagina of this mother cow, right? Then eventually it will be pushed out the whole calf or entire calf into the outside environment. So then the mother cow start kind of a leaking, kind of a cleaning of this mother cow, right? Then uh, there will be some difficulties in calving, 
right? So what are the basic difficulties in card, right? So the normal birth position is like this, as I mentioned to you. This is the normal birth position, right? But in some cases, not some, but most of the time, they are not normal, right? In those situations, what we have to be is we have to kind of a provide some assistance to the mother cow. Right? So what we have to do is uh, first we see the appearance of water bag. So once we see the appearance of water bags through the vulva or the vagina, within next one, two hours of a time, they should be able to provide or give the birth to the young one. Right? If we do not see the young one is being born, even after two hours of uh, seeing the water bag, which means there is a problem. Right? So, I have a water bag, 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 I have a water bag. So, then what we have to do is we have to consult a veterinarian if available. If not, there are some well trained livestock management personnel. Right? We have to get the support of this person just to kind of uh, help the mother animal to support this parturition process. Right? So in some cases, you might be seeing like this. Yes, of course, head, uh, the front legs are coming first, but head is kind of a down between the legs. It should be like this, right? If you can remember, this is the normal position, right? You can see the normal position over here, but here you can see it is the bent. Head. So, this is one of the issues. Right? Maybe like this. So, it is not turned into the birth position. Right? You can see it's like a normal uh, way that the animal is in a kind of a back is coming or directing towards the vagina or the vulva. Right? It is also kind of an abnormal situation. In such kind of a situation, right? Head is there directing towards the, uh, what we call uh, the vagina or the vulva, but the front leg, right, they are retained inside the uterus, right? Front leg, this is also kind of an uh, abnormal situation. Or maybe like this, head turn back. Right? Those are kind of a, the abnormal situation, right? Or maybe other way, right? Back legs are coming first, right? Yes, you can see these kind of uh, situations or abnormal uh, positions if you clearly observe these animals, right? In such situations, we have to help the animal as I mentioned. So we can use these kind of a rope, right? And then try to kind of a tie up the front leg or whatever the legs coming out, right? And then provide some assistance, right? This is also kind of a assistant given by the livestock specialist. In some cases, maybe the fetus is too large. Under such situations, we have to provide these kind of an assistant, right? You can use these ropes and try to kind of uh, drag it out through the vagina of the sentence or the valve of the sentence, right? Name which a person yet come by the ala get a gala at the lady that no support the gap here, right? You can see that here, these are the front legs, right? So these are the front legs are tied up with ropes and pushing it or pulling it hard as much as you can just to take the young ones out. Otherwise, it will adversely affect on the mother cow as well as stillbirths, right? That is why we have to say that 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 we have to say that. So, what are the things to be remembered during assisting, right? What you have to do is we have to kind of use lots of soap warm water, antiseptic agents, just to clean our hands, arms, and whatever the tools that we are using. I have my demo clean a lot here, right? In addition, we have to kind of avoid any injurious situations to the cows, right? These animals, we should avoid any injury. 
when we use ropes and those kind of things, we should have to be careful. Right? We should not push the animals unnecessarily, providing excess force. That is not good, right? Because it kind of affect on the calf as well as for the mother calf, right? And we have to help the animals as soon as possible, right? We have to take the calf out and help the cow up, right? And then just try to kind of provide or assure the normal kind of conditions for these animals, right? And we have to treat the animals with some antibiotics because there will be some wounds, right? Some stress situations or rather than kind of a normal delivery of a young calf, right? So as we discuss what we need to do after calving, right? We have to kind of uh, clean these animals, right? And we have to assure the animals is breathing, right? So we have to kind of uh, cut the navel cord, right? We have to end the treatment with some antibiotic is kind of an essential thing, right? And we have to kind of uh, uh, observe if there are any kind of infection, right? Any kind of uh, abnormal discharge, right? So we have to kind of... Uh, check for those kind of situations in these animals, right? So those are the basic things we have to kind of consider, right? Okay, so now it is 10.15. What I can do is I will give you kind of a small break, maybe about 15 minutes of a break. And uh, we will see again at uh, 10.15, right? So we will uh, continue the lecture after that. So we already discussed a lot of things and if you have any questions, we can discuss after that as well, right? So we are going to go to break. We are going to go to the next one. Right? Okay. We have to kind of clean the animal, right? And uh, that is can be done by the mother animal or maybe artificially or what you kind of manually by the farm management, right? So then what happens after calving, which is kind of inside the mother calf, right? So some fluid, right? It may contain some blood and some tissues, maybe kind of a retain inside the body of the mother cow, right? Or inside the uterus, right? So this can be kind of expelled coming out from the body of the mother cow within next few days, right? Maybe during first two, three days of a time after the calving is completed, the whatever the remaining inside the uterus or maybe inside the, uh, the track or the reproductive tract or whatever, so which is kind of expelled to the outside environment, right? So, in addition, there will be some kind of infections, specifically the uterine infections, right? So what are the kind of a common uterine infections? You may kind of a see or feel kind of an odor of the discharge coming through the kind of a reproductive tract of this kind of a animal, right? In addition, uh, you will see kind of a kind of a bloody discharge and uh, sometimes uh, there is no any kind of foul smell, but some secretions and some tissues, right? Those kind of things like uh, will expel from the uterus to the outside environment once the calving is completed within first few days after calving, right? So therefore what we have to do is we have to treat these animals with some antibiotics to kind of avoid any kind of unnecessary, right? Uh, Infections or kind of diseases may happen after calving in the mother calves or the mother animals, right? So, when we kind of discuss about some diseases, right, of uh, these animals, right, one condition or one situation is called retained placenta. You might be seeing. The, the placenta or associated tissues and those things will not be expelled completely once we are or once they are completed with their birth or kind of a calving uh, process, right? So that is called kind of a retained placenta, right? So what happens is, uh, which is kind of a retained, right? But in general, what happens as soon as the calf is born, right? So which is kind of a normally expelled, 
within next few hours or next few days of a time, right? So what happens is basically due to the contractions of the womb or the uterus, right? So those kind of uh, content we see is kind of expelled, or squeezes out of uh, the body of the animal, right? But what happens is uh, it can be remain or retained inside the cow, sometimes hanging a part of that uh, section like this, right? That is called basically uh, kind of a retained placenta. So under those situations, we have to provide some kind of a help for the animal just to remove that from, from the body, right? So what we should usually do, right? So if it is kind of a hanging from the cow to the kind of a towards the floor, right? So what we can do is uh, we just kind of uh, kind of uh, try to kind of a tie up, right? And uh, it kind of a uh, uh, kind of a rope or something, right? So then uh, just try to kind of a uh, drag it slowly out. But we should not kind of a uh, let it kind of a uh, hang any kind of a uh, breaks or sticks on it, right? So what happens then? It kind of a uh, tend to tear up, right? In the pool, right? So, what basically what we are going to do is, with the help of a kind of a trained personnel, a veterinarian, who kind of a livestock uh, management training, they are a specific training person or trained person. So, we should kind of let them know, come and help by manually removing those uh, sections or whatever the remaining, so hanging uh, outside in the body of the mother animal, right? The other one is called uh, another condition or the disease is called uh, prolapse uterus. Right? So this is kind of a uh, situation may happen uh, because of a difficult carving process, right? Not like a normal carving process, maybe because of kind of a assisted uh, carving process. <laughs> some cases, uh, some difficulties, maybe because uh, animal is having any other condition or maybe because the uh, the calf is kind of a larger than expected and maybe kind of abnormal birth position, right? So those kind of uh, things may kind of uh, indirectly support this kind of a situation. But the main reason, right, is cow is kind of a not lying on the ground level during the carving process. Again, unnecessary or kind of extra. Uh, kind of uh, 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 contractions and expelling or trying kind of spending lots of energy just to expel the the fetus or whatever the calf inside the womb to the outside environment will provide kind of a unnecessary kind of a contractions and expelling pressure to the uterus and the whatever the reproductive uh, tract of the animal right so then it's eventually kind of try to expelling out of the body of the animal, right? So what we have to do is as soon as uh, we see this kind of a situation, we have to put it back inside to the body of the cow, right? Which is kind of a, should be in a very sanitary way uh, without any contaminations. We should be able to put it back as soon as possible as we see this kind of a situation, right? So this is kind of a uh, situation resulting mainly because the ma or the mother cow is not lying on the ground level during the car, right? In addition to those things like assisted carving, some difficulties in carving, maybe larger size of a calf or whatever the uh, fetus uh, body, right? And unnecessary kind of a contractions, try to expelling whatever contained inside the body of the animal. So this is such kind of a situation, kind of a uh, prolapse. Uterus, right? So, perhaps uterus is kind of a condition. So, we have to put this back into the body of the cow as soon as possible. contractions. ground level Negative line, right? Then, uh, how to manage the dry cows, right? Dry cow management, right? 
So first we will see why we need to practice such kind of a thing. Kiyani then kiri varana wa kiyala kiyani. Kiri varana wa kiyana rara rara kane mea apma kiyani. Veen karana wa kiyani kane mea apma kiyani. Veeli karana wa kiyana kane mea sata wa kiyani. Kiri varing anta kiri ganne kana wa kiyani. Maka singali hard to explain karana wa na. Sata wa kiyani kiri api harvest karana ka completely na wa kiyani. Right? So why we practice such kind of a thing which is called dry cow management, why? All right. The first thing is we have to kind of a rest milking kind of a organs, right? Other teeds and uh, milk secretory kind of a whatever the mechanism system should be rested for some time before the cow is given birth to the young ones, right? In addition, we have to promote the fetus or embryo development rather than focusing on milk production. Right? So because this is happening, all these kind of a rapid growth and rapid developments are happening during last few months, right? As we discussed, two-third of that kind of particular growth is happening during the last two to three months of these animals or so the gestation period, right? As we discussed. Therefore, we have kind of assured during that particular time period just to promote the fetus development or the embryo development rather than inducing milk production of these animals. Right? That's what we have to do. We have to induce the fetus development. Right? development and also we have to kind of replenish or kind of a recover or restore right body reserves right basically just to kind of uh, support the animal to conserve some energy before the start or the before the starting the process of parturition yes body reserves in terms of energy, minerals, and those kind of things should be kind of restored. Right? Therefore, those things has to be kind of a, uh, considered during the dry cow management process. What are the methods of drying off then, right? dry So we are not going to kind of a practice that is just kind of a stop milking very kind of abrupt way in most of the time, but there are some methods, right? First one is called incomplete milking. So, okay, generally we completely milk them in a normal day, right? But here, time to time, maybe in the mornings, we will do only milking and in the afternoon, we are not going to do any milking. Maybe we just skip some days, right? Then do the milking or something, right? Or maybe just kind of a, uh, kind of a, uh, trying to kind of let, or be let kind of a leave more milk inside the other rather than milking, right? So that's kind of a situation kind of uh, reduce the production, right, to a few liters of milk per day, right. Then kind of a completely milking is stopped. That is called incomplete milking. Incomplete milking will be up to run. Nay, may, okkom kiriti kapi ade again gaan in ekapa, right. Tikka tikka gaan. If they take this reactor, no, I own a bill and that was a house at a bedroom, right. It was a production and a ticket to do it, but I'm going to keep it from my mother. Then the body kind of recognize that, okay, they are going to kind of a dry me off now. So then what I need to do is we have to, I have to decrease the milk production inside my body. 
because I need to kind of a ready for the drying off now and then just start conserving body energy. I do not need to produce milk anymore for a very short period of a time. So body understands that and then stop producing milk and then we stop the milking process. All right. So what we can do is uh, milk once a day, maybe for a few days of a time. Then uh, every next day, kind of a, just skip one day, right? And then stop milking completely, right? Then uh, completely we can stop in some cases, right? But uh, that is basically recommended for kind of a low producing animals, right? For an example, cows producing maybe about 10 liters of milk per day, right? So what we usually do is once kind of a once we kind of a uh, reach to the maximum production, so then what happens? The other pressure, everything reaches to a stage, right? And kind of a giving a signal back to the brain and to the other parts of the body, saying, "Okay, they are not going to harvest milk from me now, right?" So then what I have to do is I have to kind of stop producing milk and whatever the milk contained or secreted into the other, what happens, which will kind of reabsorb into the body of that animal and completely dry the other, right? We can do intermittent milking. We can just scoop milk for some uh, several days, right? Or incomplete milking or complete cessation. That is basically for the kind of a low producing end, right? Intermittent, a particular milk kernel, right? Sorry, uh, for uh, intermittent again. Uh, it was a other kernel, so I was milk. It was the only one that was taken at me. Uh, they cut to not a tad like a dosa quay kernel. It was a milk production. I do again, I would have completely stopped. Complete cessation is recommended for the animals, basically for kind of a uh, what we call uh, animals who are producing milk, uh, very kind of a low amount of milk, maybe 10 liters of milk per day. We just let uh, kind of a uh, secret milk and we do not harvest, right? Then body recognizes it, reabsorb whatever the milk produce into their body and completely die. In the incomplete milking, right? What we usually do is we just uh, stop harvesting milk completely. Right, we kind of milk intermittently, just let go and once in a day or two hours in a day or something like that, and then uh, reduce the production to kind of a level, and then we stop complete milk. So there are three methods, right? Practice in the kind of a uh, what you call industry, right? So then, what is the length of the dry period? Because Basically, it depends, right? But in general, uh, we usually recommend to dry them for at least one month to two to three months, right? We can go may up to maybe 80 days or maybe 90 days. That is the best time period that we can provide for the animals just to replenish their body reserves and kind of regain some energy and some minerals and whatever the nutrients and deposit them into the body. Right. However, these things depends on the bodily condition. Body condition. If the animal's body condition is really good, body condition can hold that body you know, shape you know, reserves less and the At least 30 days is enough. But if it is more than kind of a worse situation, very thin animal, right? Less energy kind of a reserves in the body. Okay, we have to let that animal to kind of a longer period, maybe two months, three months, just to kind of a regain whatever the nutrients and kind of a replenish their body reserves, right? Basically, if the body condition is really good, we let them dry for a kind of a shorter period of a time. If it is poor, right? If it is not up to the standard level of body condition, we kind of recommend uh, like a longer dry period, like two months or three months in some cases, right? So what we usually do during this particular time period, during the dry period, right? First, one of the uh, kind of a common, popular disease condition 
is mastitis mastitis කියන ඔය ගොල්ලෝ අහලත් ඇති mastitis කියන බෙදේ හැදුණා ගොඩක් වෙලාවට ඔය සත්තුන්ට කිරි දෙන සත්තුන්ට right it's kind of a uh, bacterial disease effect right so what we can do is we kind of a uh, uh, use uh, antibiotics right so we kind of a treat the teats or the animals with these antibiotics right so they are put during this dry period right this very convenient to the management just to kind of treat or kind of a provide some kind of a facilitation or prevention to this kind of a disease right so what we usually do is we treat them right with uh, different uh, kind of a antibiotics and just treat them and this is very effective because we are not going to milk them and since we are not going to milk them it will break the cycle of this bacteria most of the time ego lange ara cycle eka break kena mokada api hamasa kiri dona wanan e kiri teeth wala inna e bacteria infect wenna puluwan e golo damage karanna puluwan chance ekak wai namuth api kiri dona eka adu wenna adu wenna kiri nishpadanak siddha wenna nathi wenna kota me ada eke treat me teeth solai eka hara echchara usage ekak wenna nathu unahama right ඉතින් අලුතෙන් ඉන්ෆෙක්ෂන් සත් වෙන දේ සම්භාවිතාවක් තමයි මොකද මේ සයිකල් එක බ්‍රේක් කරන රයිට් මේ සයිකල් එක බ්‍රේක් කරන්න පටන් ගත්තට පස්සේ ඉතින් අපිට ලේසි මේව මැනේජ් කරගන්න. ඒක ඊළඟ ආයෙ කිරි දෙන්න පටන් ගන්න මාස දෙකක් හරි තුනක හරි පස්සේ එතකොට ඒ කාලේ වෙද්දි මේ සත හරිම රිෆ්‍රෙෂ් අර වගේ බැක්ටීරියා අර ගොල් කවුරු නැහැ මොකද ඒක මිල්කින් කරලා නැහැ මොකෝ නැහැ ඉතින් අර බැක්ටීරියා වලට කිසිම සර්වයිවල් ලැබුණ නැහැ එහෙනම් අපි නැචුරලි බ්‍රේක් කරලා තිබ්බාම ඒකලානේ සයිකල් එක but we can also provide some antibiotics or any kind of a treatments maybe it is not that much effective during the milking season milking karatte ek echcharama ara effective nathi wenna puluwa still they are we have treat we have isolated them and we have treat this animal but the effectiveness may be very less compared to the dry cow therapy so what we are kind of right uh, them as feeds for these animals right so basically what happens is uh, during the milking process right we are removing lots of nutrients from the animal body so that again again go dark nutrients api eliyata gan right so what are we taking them right basically carbohydrate sugar basically right and proteins vitamins minerals right calcium right lots of minerals vitamins and other nutrients are taken out of the animals body right however animals like a mother cow is also require more nutrients the strong is just for the maintenance of their body right just to sustain the life and the health conditions and the production purposes whether it is gestation period or lactation period or fetus growth so every time they need more nutrients right therefore we have to kind of uh, fulfill whatever the nutrient requirements of these animals right not only for the maintenance api dan hantama hitana nisa taage maintenance ekak vitara ne awashya wenne yaha meyata mahala podaya wenna ona wenne nae ne kiyala hitana wenna kenna kulu but that is not the case we have to provide lots of nutrients considering whether she is pregnant or okay. if she is pregnant okay she needs to provide more nutrients just for the maintenance of the animal just to maintain health plus fetus growth in bryage growth ekata apita awashyakara nutrients denna in addition we have to provide the nutrients for the maintenance of the gestation period plus still we are harvesting milk right so we have to maintain the production level as well so we have to consider all these factors right and provide the nutrients for these animals right so what happens if we are not able to provide optimum or proper level of nutrients for these animals so they are susceptible to diseases there will be loss of diseases right malnourishment right some bacterial viral diseases they are highly susceptible right so those are the basic things like so we have to kind of a consider when we are feeding a cow right so the, their level of nutrient what we can do is we can kind of a check their body condition score i will show you what is the body condition score 
and their production levels as well. We can check their production levels. Are they high producing animals, low producing animals, average producing animals, right? So based on that, we have to fulfill their nutrient requirements, right? If they are very high producing animals, which means they will be producing at least 50 liters of milk per day, or maybe 40 to 50 liters of milk per day. So during that particular time period, which means lots of nutrients deposited or consumed by these animals are excreted as nutrient or nutrient rich milk to the outside environment which means lots of minerals, vitamins and proteins, carbohydrates, fat are removing from the animal body and we take it as milk of these animals. Therefore, we have to replenish, right? We have to refill whatever the nutrients are losing from the animal body as final fresh milk. So we have to consider those things. But if we are not going to kind of a provide a better nutrients and kind of a replenishing whatever the nutrients are taken out of these animals' body, so they will become undernourished. Undernourished. So we have to check their production records. We have to check their body condition score, whatever the body status the energy status or the size of the body shape of the body and provide whatever the feeds for these animals. So what is the PCS? PCS that's called body condition score. Body condition score that is called kind of a scale starting from one to five. One, two, three, four, five, right? It's kind of a scale. We can just observe the animals externally, right? And then give them a kind of a number for these animals, right? We usually check their backbones, right? The hip bones, right? The ribs, the shoulders, right? Their tails, their pins, and everything, right? The externally, we can touch them, we can observe them externally, and we give a specific mark for these animals, right? For an example, these are kind of a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, scale showing you how to kind of categorize these animals based on the body condition score. So this is the body condition score 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? So this is the back side of the bone, right? This is the hip bones, right? This is the side, right? Pin bones, right? The tail view, right? The side angle view. So you can see it, right? So, based on these factors, you know, these uh, observations, right? So, this is you know, make the the it's too much of nutrients, right? So this is the well-balanced situation, right? This is the kind of well-balanced situation. Everything is well-balanced, right? This is too much or under conditions or too much of, uh, not too much, uh, less amount of uh, nutrients are provided for these animals, right? This is too much. So by looking at these factors, we can give some marks. One, two, three. So for these separate uh, sections, right? That is called basically body condition score. This is kind of a situation you can clearly see it, right? Backside, you can see this is very weak animal. You can even see them, you can even count the ribs very clearly. Right? Once you reach over here, this is condition over number three. You cannot clearly see the ribs over here, right? But it is.
well, so we will we can provide or we can change the type of diet that we offer for these animals. So if the condition score is five, which means we are providing too much of nutrients for these animals, that is not required. That is unnecessary. Right? So we can change the diet or we can reduce or decrease the amount of food or feed offers to these animals. This is also too much and uh, this body has become kind of a round in shape and still it is too much of nutrients over condition, right? But here it's very kind of a smooth body, smooth body line and very clean animal, right? So again, this is the best way. Then we will see how we kind of manage the male animals, right? We call them as bulls or stud bulls that is usually used for the uh, breeding purposes or the other bull animals, right? So if you take a uh, kind of a bulls, stud bulls, so basically we are using or keeping them for reproduction purposes, right? So we have to provide a very good feeding, housing, right? The health and general management practices just to kind of uh, maintain a very good kind of a uh, environment for these animals. But at the initial stage, maybe up to six months of age, usually they are kept together with the female animals. But after six months of a time, because they become sexually mature right after uh, that particular time period. So they are for, for the betterment of these animals, they are just separated by the six month of age. Right. So how we are going to select a very good bull calf, right? Basically, we select them based on kind of a external appearances and their progeny, their mother, their father. We check all the records, right? Production records and everything. Their mother, father, and uh, whatever the kind of a conditions uh, the they face once they are born, right? So, health condition and everything, we will kind of select the best bull calves, right? So, as I mentioned, we have to kind of check the records, right? Amma's record, Tata's record, right? Dad means the female one. Sire, that's the male one, right? Sire means the male one. Sire means the male one. means the male one. Sire means the male one. Genetic analysis, so are there any kind of a diseases, right? Uh, that you observe uh, with previous uh, situations, right? So, for an example, uh, uh, one condition is called uh, brucellosis. Give me a minute. So we have to check all the records, right? The sire's records, Dan, Dan means the mother, the female one, sire means the male one. So we have to kind of a records of uh, all these, uh, uh, whatever the uh, available records, just to kind of uh, select the best animal that is used to kind of a, for the future uh, male or the stud bull, right? The reproduction records and the production records and the genetic analysis, right? So are there any kind of a diseases available, right? All these things can be kind of a checked. And uh, 
C and then select the best available one, right? So what are the production records of these animals, right? So we can check the weight at the birth of these animals, right? And uh, what are the other basic characteristics of these animals, right? Which means uh, whether they kind of got up as soon as they were born and they just went to their mom and start drinking milk, right? The growth rate after the birth, right? And uh, what is the time they took just to kind of reach their weaning weight or the weaning age, right? Or just uh, uh, the amount of feed that they consume, maybe one kilogram of feeds for maybe three, two to three consecutive days, right? Or the characters are the same. So, we have to do this. 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 In addition, uh, how they get up and uh, kind of uh, just go to their mom and start drinking or cholesterol or whatever the milk, right? Or then uh, the growth rate after the birth, right? So all these things has to be checked and recorded. And based on those records, we are going to select the best one, right? So then uh, whether they are kind of a suitable enough for the kind of a breeding process, Right. So what are the things that we usually consider? Right. So the first one is like a, we should check their reproductive organs, whether they are having a kind of a proper optimum uh, kind of a size of reproductive organs. Right. So we can check their testes. We can just kind of a touch and we call it as palpation. Just uh, uh, kind of squish it and just see whether they are kind of a uh, in proper shape, proper size, and whether they are having major kind of uh, ductules, right? Or called the that is human nutrition. Or the other thing that humans love not that much. Testicles, on the other thing, no, it was a infertility. Can can never can not that much. Again, testicles, on the other thing, no, it was a. Or if you are shukranu, gaman can tubes, no, very well formed. Well, that thing, no, or if you are, I mean. Textical or shape picker, size seeker, right? It has a man who had no nagging iliata, a hilati no right. So, all those these factors are also checked in these animals, right? That is called testes uh, should descend into the scrotum or body pouch. Check a way up it. You must like a pyramid, a characteristic of the rot. Testicles, the end, body again, ellie, right? Body pouch, check a way, body bag, check a way, a tulta villa, right? So, that's kind of a practice should be there, right? So if they are inside the body of the animal, so we see, okay, this animal is not kind of a good level or condition for the breeding purposes, right? Why these testicles are outside the body of an animal and kind of inside of a scrotum. So basically, that is just to kind of support, right? To maintain a temperature lower than the body temperature. body temperature is Cattle can get that, this attack, this now we have to get the body temperature. The so testicles alien the in the body, right? Because the body temperature is not the temperature, maintain the temperature. More the testicles are the in a testicles are the in a pigani sperms. The sutra, pilgrims are target, jan kota solata, body temperature can be in a pramane vadi. Take it out of the temperature. The Maya maintain Karagano. That's why the scrotum. Usually support kind of a uh, uh, what you call descending whatever the testicles or so the testes into the scrotum and then eventually keeping them under lower temperature than the body temperature. Then we usually check the legs and the leaves and all those factors in these animals, right? Then when it's come to the houses, so we should provide kind of a large space for these animals, right? These things should be well ventilated should be well covered with the roof, right? You should provide kind of an area just to provide some exercise, just to run around and kind of come back again, right? That is kind of a, a situation and uh, which is kind of a separated away from other animals and other units, right? These should be kind of isolated, or not kind of isolated, but just away from the other animals, right? They should have kind of a specific attention, a specific, uh, what do you call, uh, a specific, uh, uh facilitation right for these animals just to assure some exercise right 
and some space and away from other animals with less disturbances, right? Then how we are going to handle them, like the cows or the female ones, we have to do some dehorning, right? We have to kind of remove the horns and it can be mechanical or manual or electrical. We can practice it anyway, just to kind of uh, practice this kind of a dehorning or debudding method, right? It should be done as soon as possible within first 10 days of uh, their lives, right? Because it is not that much painful or kind of more bleeding if we practice this as soon as possible. But if we let it to do maybe after several weeks or several months, what happens, which is kind of a, even more pain for these animals or more bleeding for these animals, right? So they are kind of a very easy to remove at very young stage of their life, right? So why we kind of a practice dehorning? We already discussed a little earlier as well. So if we practice dehorning, it will facilitate to handle these animals very easy, right? And also it needs very less space compared to the animals who are having horns, right? Overall, on the matagana golden goda kind of thing, like he let a baby New Zealand farm make a visit. ोनिंग <laughs> कंट्रोल करोटिकुलाइन So, what are the kind of uh, disadvantages of this uh, dehorning process? Right. Basic thing is they will lose kind of an identification or unique characteristic to these breeds or species, right? So, basic thing is uh, there are some animals, right, which are identified, right, based on these characteristics. So, that is kind of a an identification mark for these animals. They go language. अट्राक्टिव Uh, because uh, their horns are removed, right? So identification mark, yes, so definitely it will loss, and attractiveness also will be decreased. This is just to kind of uh, uh, provide you some idea. So it is kind of a defense or kind of a uh, uh, organ or part of the body which will provide a support to defend. From the predators or enemies of these animals, right? So that pila ata ande ka paachigran ei vage kriya valiya sana. Other than that, there is no much of kind of a importance of horn. That is kind of a aesthetic, kind of a unique characteristic and attractiveness plus a protective organ for these animals from the enemies or the predators, right? So what are the feeds? So we have to provide the sufficient volume of feed for these animals, right? All these with uh, vitamin A, vitamin E, basically those are antioxidants, right? And we have to provide the minerals, and also we have to provide more kind of a uh, uh, kind of a nutrients, roughages, with some com uh, kind of a concentrates with average volume or percentage of proteins, as they may need a good nutrient just to support their. Breeding process because during the breeding process they will be losing lots of uh, energy, right? So therefore, just to support that kind of a uh, process, we need to provide lots of energy to this animal to kind of be ready 
any type for breeding process, right? So we have to check this uh, breeding bull time to time. Are uh, there any kind of a diseases that can be transmitted through sexual activities, right? And also we have to check their semen uh, qualities, right? And performances before kind of uh, doing the mating process, right? And what are the performances of their children, right? If it is a male, female cow, are they are producing well, right? We can check the records and what is the conception race, right? And are there any abnormalities, any kind of a congenital defects, right? So those kind of things has to be checked all the time, right? And then based on that, we can kind of evaluate the performances of these animals, right? And if there are kind of a, uh, what do you call, any requirement, if any specific requirement, what we can do is we can uh, do some uh, vaccinations, right? Just to kind of assure they are not getting any kind of a specific disease, right? Just to maintain their health conditions, right? So similar to the uh, uh, the heifers or the cows, right? The ladies ones or the females, right? So they are also becoming kind of sexually mature, maybe at about ten months, right? But uh, similar to the previous uh, female ones, we are not going to use them for the breeding purposes because that is a kind of a early age for them, right? So similar to the female ones, the best age for the mating or the breeding process, which is starting maybe around 18 months of their age. Right? So what we usually do is initially, uh, we will use them at least one service, one service, sexual mating, right? for maybe two years, until they are reaching two weeks of age, so two years of age at least one mating for one week. So that's the main target, right? But uh, after that, we can go for at least two types of uh, services per week, right? So the next uh, kind of a six month of a time and later we can go even higher number of uh, services, right? Uh, per week and uh, do the kind of a breeding process or plan the breeding process in a particular farm, right? So when it comes to the housing systems for these animals, right? Whether it is a female one or a male one, why we need to provide housing there, right? Which is kind of a mitigation of climatic stress of these animals. Right? It can be a kind of a completely newly built house or maybe a cave or shading place or under a tree or whatever, right? But that is just to kind of uh, mitigate or reduce any kind of a stress of climate change, right? Whether it is raining, whether it is uh, snowing, or whether it is kind of a drought or kind of a warm environmental condition. So we have to kind of uh, uh, avoid such kind of a scenario. Right? Then we need to kind of a control because of the housing systems, we can control the amount of feed consumed by these animals. The amount of feed can be increased or decreased based on the type of housing systems that we are practicing. You can miss up to Kamakana. ODDSR <laughs> Right? based on their requirement. And also we can increase the amount that we are offering and then they can just kind of consume more and more feed and then increase their feed intake. In addition, we can kind of manage our laborers and our supportive staff in an efficient manner. Right? We can save lots of labor right? and we can make whatever the works available in kind of a convenient manner. 
इतना सात्तु दिको ही निदेल्ले आप यात्रा लगा लेती है ना वाला ये सात्तु में आप इतना आवश्यक दिए थे ये मैनेज कर गए ना लेबरस ने तो इन्हें कुल मुझे आप लोगों डाक लेबरस लोगों ने इन्हें तो वांगी टैंग वाले आवान्द सात्तु कुत्तों कर गए ना सात्तु के नोब्सेव कर गए ना इस सात्तु Individually or as a group, so then we know and we can clearly observe these animals, right? understand these animals, how they behave, how they eat, the type of feed that they consume, when they want to sleep, right? When they are having these heat signs, right? Or even when they have these kind of parturition signs, right? They have they are mapping on the balan In addition, we can safeguard them from any enemies, right? Enemies, predators, right? Even from the theft, right? He is lagging our shagaragan to Pulua, a hammer them up it in the In addition, we can control the diseases, pests and diseases both, right? Because if they are wandering around or going for a free grazing, right? Or if they are just walking in the park, right? So what happens? Uh, there is a high chance of getting some diseases and some pest attack. Ticks so, lavender pulla, worms lavender pulla, it amother or diseases lavender pulla, a hammer they come up. Exposure to value. Because it is out of control because they are wandering around, right? They go free grazing all the hill, the Rula Grahanari, Kohir Gila, Pound Gala, Hamatanam Hilena, got a pin and electric, I could get a in the pull. But when they are in a kind of a particular housing system, particular location with the demarcated boundary, so they cannot go beyond that. So then we can control the entry and exit point. Entry and exit point can control. Even visitors are entering and exit points can be controlled. Everything can be controlled without any serious problem. So then we can control the diseases and uh, pest attack or predator attacks. Everything can be controlled. On the other way, so if the animals are kind of a reared in a system, like an integrated system, up you integrate in a system, right? Up you vegetable, you know, even at the robber, coconut, even at the tea plantation, they got when the pulluang, it go paddy cultivation, they got when the pulluang, maize cultivation, they got when the pulluang, even get more curry cultivation, they got when the pulluang, we can reduce the damage can be caused by these animals to those. Crops or the plantations as well. You see, the animals are kind of a rearing under a free kind of environmental system, right? Free grazing system. You can start to a picanimini manage current on them. It already sat to me. May crops a lot of window pull one damage checker, where do you end up pull? But if they are confined into a particular uh, what you call a uh, Find into a particular housing system. So they are not going to go to outside environment. They are just staying inside the houses, right? So there will be no any kind of damages to these housing systems, right? So therefore, we can safeguard those crops as well. And then harvesting is easy, right? Harvesting is milking process. So milking process is also kind of a very convenient and very easy. Because they are inside the housing system, or we can use the milk in machines or milk in parlor, a manual method just to harvest whatever the what you call uh, products coming out from these animals, right? So when we design a house, right? So what are the factors that we should consider, right? We houses we have so what are the factors we are usually kind of a considering when we are designing a house, right? So basically, we have to have kind of a sufficient space for grass cultivation or feed formulation or whatever the feed management. We have to have kind of a sufficient land or a space, right? Water availability, right? Feed availability or feed spaces availability. Right, and also sufficient kind of a shading system. Right, if, if we are kind of letting these animals for grazing in the environment, 
ोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलोलो
So they are in a tie up system. Tie up a system and they are in a kind of a tail to tail. Tail to tail can again with another monkey system. Tail to tail system and head to head system. Tail to tail system means their backside are facing each other. They are faces facing outside. Egolange me up again me. Fasaga, backquarters. Eva, you know, I take a face cut. The Miyagi Pima, me level like a thin. The Ulu at the end, a little bit. So then there are some advantages and disadvantages of such kind of a situation. But here, the main advantage is when you are doing the milking process, so you can do the, you can access both the rows at the same time. The milker, a renacota, body portable milking machine, heading body, may pet the satu, may pet satu, they will make a par access current along over and his car the retina. You have to have two separate uh, rows for the feeding purpose. The same thing I have mentioned here, the wide middle alley makes kind of a cleaning process. Milking process very easy because all the fecal matters and urine are collected over here. Right? Milking matter. Milking karanapula may madhila, yeah, amatram. May fecal matters, amadiam, collect any main method. Right? So, you come clean karana place. Right? And also, the animals are facing outside. You know, the Eliot Baba, all the agony. It would have respiratory diseases. Same, a kinekani, a kinekani spread when it's in a chance to get the cat. Adui, Moka, they go to Eliot Muhala, the end. They will be getting a very good ventilation, right? On the ventilation, I can call a number of the Mego Eliot face car line and so, right? Saha may diseases spread when it's in a chance to get the cat. Adui. So these things I already kind of discussed over here, right? And also, since animals are facing their backside together, right, we can easily detect their heat signs, parturition signs, any diseases in the backside of the animal. We can heat signs too, right? Heat parturition. 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 Backquarter pathway within a disease, so coma conditions hammer them up with other egg, right? Any issues with the other. Everything very easily can be checked by one person who is kind of a walking through this central alley, right? Then head to head system. Head to head system means animals are facing each other, right? Head to head system again, they are facing each other, right? So they kind of uh, uh, seeing other animals on the other side of the house, so the pets, right? The one of the best uh, support of this kind of a system is since they are kind of a facing each other together and whatever the sunlight right, is coming from the side walls of the housing systems, right? They can easily be dried off and disinfected the back or the hind quarter of these animals. Me saath tunge, hind quarter eka, no dark on the tether quarter disinfect me, heck ya wak pee na, because ya lage back side deka face karan ne, Elliot. His head deka na me back eka. He thore Elliot in our, our jane sun rays, na the solar ray radiation, directly kind of a contact with the back side of these animals, right? So then it will, eventually kind of a disinfect these animals backside including the other uh, vagina or the vulva area or even the rectum the tail area and everything will be kind of a disinfected and will be dried very easy but these are facing together you know on that they are facing together these are very close animals but here you can see still they are facing together here, the main thing is you can have only one central alley just to support the feeding process. Mm -hmm. But you have to have two separate 
areas for the collection of fecal matter as well as for the milking purposes. Harvesting all the Mongol and Pira may be passe, may patting, may Saturn win over the may patting Tama, may may Saturn give up a drug to a grandful, and Saturn give up a patting to a grandful, may pull langit the hemat, may patting the magnet to a grandful, may patting for the pat tuck tin, patty the hacking apita, use carano, urine, fecal matter, and also. We have to use the same pathway just to kind of do the harvesting of wheat. Now that over and 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 over fecal matters are milking process. Separately, we have to access to two different pathways or two different lines. But the feeding is very easy under this situation, and there is a risk of spreading diseases, respiratory diseases from one animal to another animal because they are facing each other. If you look at the chance that you know diseases spread in the research and respiratory associated diseases, right? The another type is called loose housing systems. Loose housing systems means animals are just loose. They are not tied up. confined Methane as saw in there, Otter mean the Gen Otter Varla, Nagin Nagaran, or a selective disadvantage to Mesata Nagitina Cotta, Vadino, Mesata teaches me him both him, Paggy me, Chanceca, Tin. But loose housing system maker, right? It is very convenient, right? It is very convenient, spacious. Animals can walk here and there inside the housing systems, right? No, any kind of a major issues, limitations like we had for the other ones because these are kind of a free movement and right. So we can provide a better welfare, right, and some exercise for these animals, right. right? And also we can easily detect the heat signs within the heat signs of the balanda the animal are free in. Behavioral science pen right? Eva the Balanapula may situation right? So the Matrakia, Monade, Vena Stampila, Migol and Vena, house systems, right? Come the house in Kadrisha, tie up house system, Mirana, I get enough for past the Kakta head to head, tail to tail. Those houses system may have got the monothy advantage, monothy and disadvantage. If I have a demo on the term, it's not a good So, when we kind of uh, develop a house, right? There are some basic components in a house, right? Even in our houses, when we construct a house, right? We kind of seek and try to assure, right? Some basic components, right? What is the type of uh, bricks that we are going to use? How many number of windows? How many number of uh, doors available? Number of bathrooms? Number of uh, rooms? You know, kind of bedrooms? Master bedrooms, right? Attached bathrooms, right? Storage rooms? Uh, living room? TV room? Kitchen, right? Likewise, right? So there are kind of a uh, Components we have to look on these animal houses as well. First, we have to kind of look at the floor. It should be easily kind of a clean and should be very dry, right? And we can use some concrete or cement, right? Just to kind of uh, uh, construct the floor of the houses and we should construct them in a kind of a slope direction. Just to kind of collect and clean the excreta uh, produced inside the farm houses, right? The walls, right? They should be very smooth, right? And no any kind of uh, protruding materials, protruding kila kyan kangara, wool kali, anakali, concrete kali, right? 
so no any kind of uh, damages right to the animals and uh, the corn the 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 wall corners are going to be taken again. How many times? Go back. Pela water. How many people are going to die? Circular shape. When hot water water has been applied. So then we can easily clean them right and better air circulation, better light and everything. So walls should be constructed on kind of focusing on those factors. Then the roof right. What are the type of materials that we are going to use for the roof of these animals, right? Whether it is uh, natural leaves like cajun leaves or asbestos or tiles, right? Or corrugated iron sheets. So are we, what are the things that we are going to use? So based on the, the normal temperature, ambient temperature, environmental conditions, we can select the best raw material can be used for proof of these animals, right? Then the manga. Manga means uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, areas just to kind of provide the feed for these animals. Manga is like a body in the world, the body is the body, 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 the body so, which will reduce feed wastage. Cement the MO, Agi Hadala, concrete to Lim Hadabu, Camadena, Cotasti, Patuli. A Satuin Nagana Balla, and I go like a fish me Hadani, like Satay Tumang, Satar open a minimum space at the cable Hadel. So, that is just to kind of uh, prevent the feed wastage of uh, these farming or whatever the farming management, right? Then the alleys, right? Alleys means we can have a kind of a central area. Then we have the gutters, right? Gutters, the unknown, just to kind of uh, remove whatever the waste generated or water that we use to clean these animals. So there should be kind of uh, alleys and the gutters just to kind of uh, remove these uh, waste materials as well as easy to access, right? And we should have better alleys, right? Alley kela kya ni? Alley ka kela kya na? Na maybe the central walk path the. Ini thamma wahane karangi lo de patta de head to head de karna. Ekka pat de patta ta kya ma da agni ano? Ekka pat mein upar na kina maybe the na space karna. Maybe the kya ma da agni ano? Tail pill system de karna. Ani pat de patta ta na. Kine na ma feeling ni mangas the no ni wada kya ma da agni ano? To ani pat the slope pin ha da no ni ekka ta urine. Uh, water, fecal matter, or come clean color, I interrogate the full one minute with it, right? And then uh, the location of these farms, right? Or the areas that we can select to construct a, a kind of a housing system or dairy farm, right? First, we will look at the topography and the drainage. Go ahead, so I'll let that pass it. Location of Fagata, the Pasapi Balan, no monoda, which are the hand machine Balan on factors. We are Kadan, Missatut, right? Missatumi Hadala then, one of the Balan factors. So, what are the things that we usually consider, right? The first one is the topography and drainage, right? So, whether it is a elevation, the higher elevation, and what is the drainage condition? Uh, are there any kind of a water login condition, right? Landslides, right? Any kind of a, a location which is very close to the what you call uh, any kind of a, a farming system or whatever the system creating uh, some hazardous gases or whatever the odors, right? So we have to check on those things first, right? Then the soil type, right? It should be very fertile soil, right? Because we have to cultivate some grasses, feeds for these animals, grasses, corn. On, right, uh, or maybe any other kind of a feeding materials like legume types, right? So we should have kind of a very good, well, uh, kind of a hydrated soil type with very good fertility just to support these kind of a feed cultivation, right? And it should be kind of a protected from the sunlight, right? And windy, right? If it is too much of wind surrounding area. So we should have to be considered whether we are going to construct the housing systems in kind of a particular selected location, right? 
then the access, whether we have very better or very good access to the building, right? And access to the farm, whether we have kind of a proper infrastructure road facility with uh, sufficient space and drainage just to access the farm and uh, just to kind of transport whatever the goods available needed for these farm management, mm -hmm. right? Then the durability, attractiveness, right? The scenic view, the aesthetic value, right? So that's why we go to New Orleans and Abbey and like New Zealand farms because they are also in a location which kind of a aesthetic value. We have very good scenery, right? Scenic view, very good for photographs, kind of a, a create some memories, right? And also the durability, how long we can keep them, right? Uh, the, 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 the level of strength that we usually uh, need for these buildings, right? To kind of uh, having a long shelf or the long lasting uh, ability of these uh, building structures. The water supply, water is very essential. The water supply should be there. It should be very clean, cheap, and uh, low, high quality, right? The labor, the support of labor, whether we can find laborers enough laborers in the environment, right? Or in the kind of a supporting uh, uh, kind of a nearby areas, right? They should be very honest and uh, economic, which means low wages or average wages, right? And regular supply, right? The surroundings, right? Are there any predatory animals, any kind of a wild animal? Are uh, the areas kind of infected with any kind of a diseases, right? Uh, whatever the kind of uh, uh, what do you call uh, any kind of a, uh, uh, enemies or whatever threats to the uh, farms or the animals, right? In addition, inside the farms, what do you call the entrance gates and uh, what do you call other areas with any kind of a damaging or threatening uh, structures are there, right? Any nails like thing, right? The floor should be very smooth in finish, right? And a very good marketing system. We should have a very good market, right? Abi ya khada bi wa ke saath tunda. Abi ya khada lahari ya ne me physio market pe na di thena. Abi ya khada product ke ikuna ganda thena hakti hai, right? Should have a very good market for whatever the products that we kind of are going to produce within the farm. And electricity supply, you know, these days it is very expensive, right? So are there any alternative supply, solar radiation, whatever the solar power, or maybe wind power, or go the Latino and Angola, or go to the Latino, or they will farm it on a party, wind bills go up then, right? Turbines, right? So they will uh, generate lots of, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, power that can be uh, used for their day to day activities within the farms, right? So these kind of factors, right? Electricity supply should be. Reliable and continuous supply. Then what are the other factors, right? So feed storage, uh, hay stacks, silos, manual kind of waste management pits, right? So they should be there just to kind of manage them in an efficient manner under those circumstances, right? So those are the basic things that I kind of uh, wanted to discuss under the dairy cattle management, right? Recording stopped. We have one more thing to kind of discuss, right? Uh, that is basically the milk or the milk associated uh, factors, right? So I will uh, discuss that one and then I can finish it off, right? But still, if you have any questions, so we can discuss that one, no any issues, right? Recording in progress.
Right. Uh, yeah. Someone asked me about whether the lecture notes will be uploaded. Yes, of course, I will. Uh, I already uploaded whatever the lecture notes that we discussed last week into the LMS and whatever the things that I am going to discuss. So I discussed today so far. And whatever the things I will be discussing, so will be uploaded into the LMS. Uh, but uh, I will not be uploading any kind of uh, what you call uh, uh, notes regarding uh, the recordings, right? So I will not be uploading the recordings to the systems, not, not this week and the last week. And only the lecture notes will be uploaded to the system, right? Okay, so then uh, the clean milk production. So that is the last uh, thing that uh, I wanted to kind of cover off today. So, milk that is basically coming from these animals, right? Regardless of uh, the type of animal. If you take uh, cattle, dairy cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, those are ruminant animals. So, one of their major product is milk, targeting the human consumption plus whatever the young generation or whatever the offspring they produce need to consume this milk during their initial life stages, right? So that's why we kind of a concern about this one because if we are kind of rearing a dairy animal, which is very kind of a compulsory uh, to kind of a produce milk by their moms, right? Just to cater the nutrient requirements of these young animals, right? So that's the main thing that we are also doing. What we do is what they produce as milk, is harvested by humans, right? And use it for our purposes. So that's what generally happens, right? So when it comes to the milk, right? Which is one of the excellent source for the growth of microorganisms because it is highly nutritional substances. Right? It contains lots of proteins, vitamins, minerals, and fats, right? Sugar, which means carbohydrate, which contain lots of nutrients, right? So what happens if we produce milk unhygienical conditions, right? no one with it had right? Or when we handle them in careless manner, right? It can contain it very easily and without a doubt, right? It will lead for the spoilage of the milk. So in order to prevent this one, right? So what we have to do is we have to kind of a highlight the clean milk production, right? So clean milk, basically what happens is uh, we can practice, we can obtain clean milk with several methods, right? What we can do is we can um, use, we can use some clean utensils, right? We can clean the udder, we can kind of uh, avoid any kind of extra materials kind of a surrounding environment like dust, flies, any manure like urine or fecal matter, right? So then we can kind of uh, assure, right? We are producing a very good level of milk just for the human consumption. Otherwise, it will be really kind of a bad for the consumption and we will be having low quality products, right? So what are the kind of factors influencing this quality of milk? We produce and what we kind of are handling in the uh, process of milk production, right? So basically, these animals, when we kind of uh, think about some animals, so we have to think about these animals that they are should they should be kind of a free from any disease conditions, right? For an example, we earlier discussed about the mastitis, right? So they should be free from mastitis or maybe any other disease conditions, right? TB, tuberculosis, right? Brucellosis or whatever the kind of a diseases which can be communicated to humans or maybe to other animals through milk. And free from some bacterial diseases like salmonella, right? E. coli, streptococcus, right? Or any viral infections, right? As like a, a cow fox, right? Uh, FMD, like we call Aramukaha Kuraroge Kilapikani. Foot and mouth disease, mm -hmm. right? So those things should not be there in these animals if we are using them for milk production. So we have to assure the health of these animals. Then the cleaning process. So what we are going to do to assure these animals are clean, right? So we can kind of uh, 
uh, kind of a clean these animals with the routine grooming practices, brushing, and we can wash them, right? And we can wash the teeth of these animals during the harvesting process, right? And we can kind of uh, clean them uh, and we can dry them, right? And uh, we can avoid any dung, mud, or baiting materials, or straw may be kind of contaminated with some microorganisms and get in touch with the animals as well as whatever the products come from these animals, right? And the environment, right? It should be very clean, right? Well ventilated. That's why I was discussing uh, the type of houses that we require and uh, what are the factors we consider when we are kind of a developing or constructing a housing system, right? Well ventilated, light should be there, right? And the direction, right? The kind of a, uh, uh, the, the flow that we kind of a construct should not kind of a accumulate dung or whatever the cow dung or whatever the manure kind of is created from these animals, right? So that's why when I, was discussing about houses, I was telling you that like uh, we need to have having kind of a housing system with a very good slope just to collect this manure and urine without any kind of an issue and safely removal from the housing systems and collected into a waste treatment plant, right? So those things has to be practiced just to assure kind of a very clean milk production, right? So when we kind of consider about the type of water, we have to assure providing very good quality water, right? This should be kind of a, aware from any kind of a contamination, specifically microorganisms, right? And also we have to kind of have a clean, high quality water, right? And feeds should be free from any kind of aflatoxins, some heavy metals, right? Talk of whatever the plant, uh, originated toxins. Yes. We have to check all these uh, factors and kind of try to avoid any kind of a contamination with these things with the animals, right? As well as with the milk that they produce. Utensils, what are the uh, equipments that we use for these uh, kind of a milk production processes, right? So we have to kind of uh, clean these things, right? All the time with disinfectant and we can use uh, uh, some methods to sterilize with, uh, to avoid any contaminations, right? We can uh, kind of uh, uh, use them and dry them and keep them in a kind of a safe place until we are using for the next steps, right? And also we have to assure them, right? Uh, they Once they are kind of a milk, right? As soon as we milk them, we just take them and put them in a cool environment or refrigerated environment just to kind of minimize the growth of microorganisms inside the milk because it is very nutritious food, right? Then the milkers hygiene, right? So what are the factors the milker should follow, the guidelines should follow to avoid any kind of a contamination or just to assure the quality of clean milk production, right? So the milk should be clean. That's the first thing, right? Well washed and hand are washed, right? And free from many diseases, like uh, they should avoid sneezing, coughing, or even smoking, right? And consumption of tobacco, chewing of tobacco, right? No any kind of uh, alcohol use during uh, this kind of a process, right? and uh, should be free from any kind of a disease like can be contagious to other people like cholera, typhoid, diphtheria, TB, right? And also they should clean their hands and arms, right? And also their fingernails should be well trained, right? Always they should use soap and uh, kind of clean towels, right? Just to kind of clean by themselves right and also uh, uh, the milkers should not practice kind of a uh, what do you call it? wrong milking practices right again where the lesser milk harvest practices practice karana 
right? Uh, there are several methods, the hand milking methods, machine milking method, milking parlor, right? For manual methods, right? For double milking machine, the knuckling, right? So those things should not be kind of a do in a wrong way or wrong manner, right? And we can do some uh, works just to kind of educate the farms, right? So we can do several uh, kind of visits to the farms, right? And we can inform them, aware them, right? Or educate them, right? So what they should do just to kind of do or produce clean milks. They should adopt, right? Good animal husband practices, right? And just to kind of limit any kind of a hazardous contamination, particularly microorganisms or the bacteria contamination, right? Uh, we can kind of uh, guide them and train them, right? Just to kind of maintain a very good quality uh, standards of milk and uh, kind of a proper paying system, right? Higher prices, right? So then we can just kind of uh, uh, assure or kind of uh, ask them just to kind of uh, produce milk in a very good quality manner, right? So in general, when we kind of consider about the clean milk production, so this is just to show you kind of a sketch setup of a milk in parlor or kind of a milking uh, uh, factory, right? So basically, uh, if we practice high or good quality practices, right, we can use the kind of a clean and whatever the kind of a good environmental practices just to kind of uh, avoid any contaminations, right? However, normal surfaces or whatever the uh, areas, we kind of a highly uh, kind of a, uh, what do you call, uh, gather product academies, very poor gavis in the tank, farm hikari, emanatang factory hikari, very poor handling in it, right? The areas we are kind of a contribute or kind of a joining for uh, kind of a gathering more and more people and more and more uh, uh, other kind of a active areas, right? We are the places which will contribute significantly for the total contamination process of milk we are produced in the farm, right? So when we kind of uh, consider about the buildings, so that's why we already discussed about the, the buildings and how we are kind of constructing housing systems. You can just go through them and uh, read them and don't worry about whatever the measurements, right? The height, width, length. So those are not that much important for you, but just go through them. I already discussed it, right? So when we, how we are kind of uh, uh, have the houses, what are the uh, access point, right? So there should be some access point, entry and exit point, and the, the people should not be allowed to go everywhere they want inside the farm. If you go to the Ambivala farm, again, you see them, right? So you have some entry points, right? And some access points. So you are not close to the animals, right? So you are not close to the animals, right? But still, we can see them properly, clearly, in a very good distance, right? All the practices can be seen very carefully. No any issues, right? But still, you can uh, see it, right? But no any cross contact with the animal. So that's how you should develop or construct the buildings, right? Still, you have the access to the buildings, but uh, you are not close to the animal. So then there is less chance of spreading any diseases, any kind of uh, hazardous contaminations, right? So we can kind of avoid and uh, minimize those kind of things, right? And when you kind of use different utensils, right? You can use stainless steel or whatever the aluminum, right? Uh, originated uh, utensils, right? So then it will kind of uh, uh, free from any kind of uh, what do you call decaying, right? Api kaya nga na malakad na kala yung sauti makpin na ito ko na api stainless steel or aluminium wag yung use kalot na yun. And uh, if you use any kind of uh, uh, equipments, the surfaces of those equipments should be free from any kind of a damaging, kind of threatening uh, pieces, right? Of sports, right? So those things kind of like a, a non-corrosive surfaces should be there, right? So those things kind of a, will assure the clean milk production process, right? So this is just kind of guideline. 
how you should wash your hands right before you entering this kind of a plant or before you go for milking the cows right i will show you kind of a picture that uh, give me a second Right, so this is a kind of a manual milking process, right? You might have seen this, I just wanted to show you again, right? So you can see this person, this is the milker, right? Who is milking, right? So you can see this is kind of a stainless steel kind of a bucket, but still you can see what are the other unhygienic uh, places uh, inside this kind of a location, right? So you can see the other is not well cleaned over here, right? So other is not well cleaned, right? Maybe he washed his hand, but I don't know. We don't know, right? Uh, but the floor, you can see floor is also kind of a muddy floor, right? So there is high kind of a chance of contamination, right? And anyway, this one is stainless steel, but I believe they have kind of a cleaned it before kind of using that for the uh, milk uh, kind of harvesting using this method, right? So those are kind of a factors we have to consider. And also you have to clean the teeth. The teeth are a bit put a cladalana milking process, right? So we have to kind of consider those factors, otherwise, we cannot assure a clean milk production process, right? So this is the drinking of milk by young calf, right? So we should not allow them to drink milk before we are doing the milking process, right? But we milking karani sir, me aadu bondu dono thene me me a kiri te okkom milk daandu pulva. Ye thoda apita ona karna milk pramani pulva ganda bari veinda pulu, right? So that's the main things we have to consider and we have to clean before we start the milking process. So that's the main thing, right? The milker should kind of clean whatever the uh, teeth and the other of these animals just to assure the clean milk production, right? So I will show you a milking machine as well, right? Okay, so these are the portable milking machines, right? So this is a kind of a, uh, what do you call, machine milking uh, unit. So this is machine milking, right? So you can see the calf is cow is over here and it is kind of connected to the udder, right? Then the, all the milk will come through these tubes and will go through these tubes and enter into a separate machine, right? So these are the kind of a, a milking machines that they usually use for the milking purposes, right? These are the portable ones, portable milking machines. But the thing is, in order to assure the clean milk production, you have to use these kind of a utensils like uh, stainless steel utensils and these kind of cups are also kind of in stainless steel and also once you are done with the milking you have to clean these equipments properly and make it away they got the me i'm going to come on properly clean can i know you know when they contaminated milk curry mono hariti both them you are clean when that work it means pass a milk or comma damage in the pool you know that this card color that when blah 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 tubes and bottom you have a dream Otherwise, we will be in danger in producing some kind of a decayed or deteriorated milk, right? So this is uh, the same machine, a portable one, right? This is a stainless steel machine, right? So the milk will be collected through these cups, right? Maybe the teeth are done cup together. Api, api, api use karna when what? Api make cups use karna. Api da, I mean, milk kega processor kega pahasit jet karga na pulo. This is kind of a same thing, right? The milking machine, right? In the milking parlor, also the same setup, right? So these are the cups, eat cups, right? You know, about eating and hiker and maybe when I'm up bigger, right? So this is the container that collect milk coming through this machine, the tubes, right? Right. So that is cups, right? That's that's what I wanted to highlight over there, right?
right? So then this is how we kind of clean our hands, right? So we already kind of went through that one, right? So <clears throat> there are some disinfectants or maybe kind of a soap or any kind of a uh, liquid soap just to kind of clean our hands before we enter into the milking parlor or maybe just enter into the uh, location where we usually practice the milking. So then how we can kind of clean, uh, we can produce clean milk for the human consumption. So water supply, what should be there all the time, right? So it should be uninterrupted, uh, not contaminated, right? So we have to check every time and chlorine water, it should be very minimum, right? Not should, should not be chlorinated water, right? Should be portable and should kind of have very easy access and not kind of a hard water. Again, a cooled water killer should not be like that, right? And uh, always we have to test through the laboratory site. Whatever the milk we collect, we have to test, right? Whether we have the uh, fat percentage, water percentage, uh, protein, sugar level, ash level, right? In addition, we have to check for any kind of a uh, material that we are using for any kind of a contamination time to time. Some other machines, we have to know that contaminations are not the same. We have to do anything about the swabs. We have to do anything about the swabs. Not all the places are doing these kind of practices, but the locations where we have the technology, right? the people with the experts, they usually check at least a few times. Uh, targeted uh, times, they check any suspected areas for any contamination, right? The air quality, right? Everything should be there, right? We have kind of a check on those factors, right? So how we are going to clean those equipments, right? So those things are given here, right? Those are very simple things to understand, right? So very easily we can clean them using very clean, pure water, right? So at least rinsing with water is more beneficial than doing nothing, right? So that's the best thing, right? If you don't have to do anything, you can clean water, flush out, you can use the machine, 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 clean milk production concept. Right? Otherwise, milk will kind of contaminate with microorganisms and with other hazardous compounds and it will kind of lead to any kind of a threat to the human health at the end of the day, right? Yes, okay. So that's what, yeah, you don't need to discuss these things. I will share the whatever the slides you may need to kind of uh, uh, understand, go through your exams, right? But I here I want to highlight what are the factors we should consider when we are thinking of clean milk production, right? Abhi Pirsudu, Nathanga, Contamination. Adu kirinishpa adhi nidhi api vedagatthi na karu monu adhi kini. Main thing is we have to assure the cleanliness, right? That's the best thing of the uh, people who are involved, animals who are involved, the location and the equipments that we are using, right? We have to be healthy first. Animal has to be, uh, animal have to be kind of a healthy, healthy, healthy animals, right? And then uh, the other factors such as utensils and the environment, the air quality, water quality and uh, other factors are matters just to assure overall quality milk production, right? Okay, so what I kind of uh, wanted to discuss, right, was this at the end of the day, right? Recording so, stopped. So if you have any questions, actually we can discuss, right? So what we kind of uh, initially discussed, we wanted to highlight uh, understand what are the basic uh, what you call breeds available in ruminant uh, animals as I mentioned in the morning, right? And how we identify those animals and what are the factors, exhaustive breeds, local breeds, Indian type breeds, right? Or cross breeds types, right? So we already discussed those things, right? And uh, if you have kind of uh, other factors, right? We can discuss, but uh, then we discuss uh, how we kind of manage these cattle, right? Dairy cattle from birth or even from breeding to the birth and uh, milk production and how we assure the quality milk production, right? The diseases associated 
and housing systems, right? So that's what we kind of briefly went through uh, with the, these sections or this uh, kind of uh, setups, right? So if you want to kind of uh, come to a degree later, maybe the plantation management external degree or whatever, so you will start to learn these things in depth, right? So what is kind of a, what are the main factors and all those things will kind of a start the basic scientific background in depth once you come to the university, if you want to kind of learn more about these uh, subjects, right? So anyway, so if you have any questions, what we can do is we can discuss, right? Or uh, we can just uh, go through, or if you have any questions, so we can just discuss. If you have anything to clarify, we can kind of discuss those things, right? So as I mentioned, I already uploaded the lectures uh, we discussed last time to the LMS under the course title. Uh, Ruminant Management A3, like this, and you can access and you can see whether uh, uh, kind of any specific questions regarding those things so we can discuss. Right? So I will upload uh, whatever the things that we discussed today uh, in a kind of a summary uh, into the LMS and then you can go through them as well. And ready for the exam, I will let you know the date for the exam pretty soon. And uh, hopefully uh, by tomorrow, I guess, and uh, we will have the exam maybe by the end of this week or maybe early next week. Anyway, before Christmas, uh, we will have the exams. Right? So then we are done with the uh, all the sessions over so the next week, 22, yes. That's my target. Hopefully by this Friday, at least, uh, we will have the exam. I will talk to uh, Dr. Shashi and then let's see how it goes. And uh, somebody asked me, sir, do we have any practical sessions? Uh, yes, I need to check that one with the, what you call the course coordinator regarding the practical sessions. But uh, your course module says, uh, it's kind of a, there is a field visit, right? Uh, and hopefully we will have a field visit, but I am not sure, right? So I will talk to the course coordinator and let you know whether you are having a field visit or not. I believe you will have a field visit uh, just to go and maybe NLDB farms like Kurunagala or what you call uh, uh, National Livestock Development Board, Malsirpura Farm, hopefully, but I'm not sure. Uh, I can confirm that one with uh, Course coordinator and let you know through the LMS if you have any kind of a visit under this course or course modules, right? I will let you know about that one maybe by tomorrow, not tomorrow, day after tomorrow, Monday. I will go and talk to a course coordinator and let you know, right? Okay, so you have already done the field visit, right? Yes. So then there is no any issues, right? So that's what I get. Uh, so any practical sessions? I don't know. Any other practical sessions there? No, I don't think so. I'm not sure, but I will. I was not informed anything about that. So I will talk to coordinator and let you know if any other practical sessions or any kind of uh, things available, right? So if you have done the practical or whatever thing means like a real visit, so don't worry about this one. So I think you, then you have some kind of a, thorough understanding what we wanted to discuss and what we are kind of expecting from this course, right? Okay, let you know, let me know if you have any questions, so then we can discuss no any issues. I will be here for a few minutes again. Mm. So that's what we had to discuss today, right? That's what the course apps will also mention, right? So we are not going to discuss those details. I can go back to it. In detail, this is just a kind of superficial understanding. But in some cases, I discuss something in deep. Because otherwise, you will not be understanding what I wanted to highlight over here. right? Uh, but in general, that's what we wanted to discuss. The identification of breeds, like cattle, buffalo, goat, and sheep. right? and how we manage these cattle, like newborn calf, weaning, crop management, heifers, and the breedings, right? 
then the pregnating, uh, so pregnant can be lactating cows, right? Dry cows, right? Now we are going to, we already discussed that one, why we want to dry these cows and what is the importance of that one, right? And uh, what are the common diseases we can see with these pregnant or whatever the animals, right? In general, we will see the diarrhea, right? Some laxative effects, right? Some uh, respiratory issues in young cows, right? And coccidiosis in young animals, right? But once they are grown, basically the ones associated with the, the reproduction, right? The prolapse uterus, right? Retain placenta, right? In addition to whatever the respiratory issues and like uh, what you call, uh, there are lots of diseases in addition, right? So, but I discussed this kind of briefly, whatever the basic diseases, but there are any kind of like uh, bloating, right? Bloating, right? Woman, a gas, right? So, in addition, there are some mineral uh, kind of uh, uh, poisoning or deficiencies, and those kind of diseases are available, but you don't need to discuss those things in depth, right? That's why I did not discuss all those diseases, but the major diseases associated, like the uh, placenta, uh, brucellosis, and um, what they call uh, uh, prolapse uterus, right? Uh, diarrhea. Uh, respiratory some diseases right those are pretty common among these animals right but there are in addition some uh, diseases like bloating human like a gas accumulated in the product you get up in a blot but a pimpin but a pimpin those are called bloating so those things are basically kind of uh, you already kind of discussed but some diseases are not that much important to your level so hopefully uh if you are coming to discuss or study in degree or master's level, uh, so you can just kind of uh, study those things in depth. Then the clean milk production. So what is clean milk production? What is the main reason for the contamination? Basically, that is bacteria, right? In addition to other microorganisms, bacteria is the main organism causing such kind of a contamination, right? And why those kind of things are happening among the uh, animals because of the milkers issues, building issues, environmental issues, or animal issues, right? So those are the major factors that cause such kind of a uh, what we call uh, issues, right? Okay, so if you have any questions, so we can discuss while we'll be here. Otherwise, what we can do is we can just stop for the day and uh, we will meet for the exam, not we will meet, but I will uh, post uh, the sessions through the LMS and let you know. And uh, then you can study the materials and ready for the exam. Similar to what we had, I think, uh, very first module. So we will have uh, MCQ type questions, most probably, most of the time. And uh, you can answer them. It shouldn't be very difficult, very easy, very general things. I will be asking very general, very simple things, not kind of a very scientific or very in-depth questions since this is a kind of a diploma level course, right? Okay, so please let me know if you have any questions, but uh, I will clarify whatever the uh, practical sessions with the course coordinator and let you know, right? Uh, sir, do we have practice quizzes? Practice quizzes? Uh, let's see. I will try. But uh, I don't know whether last time I think we had some quizzes, right? So I, I will try my best to upload some questions to the LMS. And let's see. Uh, based on the time that I have. So I will try my best to upload some uh, questions as practice questions so then you can get some idea the type of questions you may have for your exam as well right i will upload maybe several questions to the lms and then uh, you can access them as well right. uh, thank you sir yeah don't worry i will not be asking anything other than the notes that I have uploaded to the LMS. So you just go through the LMS notes and that should be enough. Right? Don't worry that uh, I will be asking any kind of any other questions. No, I will not be asking any questions from 
outside the things that I discuss. So you don't need to worry about that part. So you just go through the notes available with you and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through the exam. I think you did really well for your last exam as well with the uh, uh, poetry. So the questions would be pretty similar. So don't worry. So if you have any questions, you can ask. Otherwise, uh, we can stop for the day. And then uh, tomorrow, I'll do the same thing and the same discussion. And uh, then I will let you know through the LMS about the exam. Right? Hopefully, by the end of this week, right? Or maybe this Friday or maybe this Saturday coming. Uh, I will talk to the course coordinator and let you know about the uh, exam. Right? So since we, have, we will be having what you call the long... Uh, breaking for the Christmas, like Monday and Tuesday, there was a holidays, right? Therefore, it's better if you can finish the exam by this week. So then you are free. Otherwise, I can talk to course coordinator and ask about any other day. But let's see. I will let you know through the LMS, maybe by Monday morning or Monday, what is going to happen. But anyway, keep in touch with the uh, notes, right? Or notes like a touch again. Okay, then uh, if you do not have any questions, so what I can do is I can stop uh, for the day and uh, good luck for the exam. And hopefully, uh, you will have a better vacation and uh, happy new year and uh, Merry Christmas, who are kind of celebrating the Christmas. Right. Okay, then uh, hopefully, we will be meeting if any kind of a course that you are going to take under the Viable University or maybe if any other university, if I am teaching, we will meet you again. And uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the LMS. But I think my email address is over there and you can send me any text or message through the LMS so I can answer if any questions. And uh, good luck with the exam and have a good uh, rest of the day and good weekend. And uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.